Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Marvel. The Strongest Villain. Chapter 21. The creaking and creaking, shaking gradually stopped amidst a burst of exciting ups and downs. Felicity lay in Su Sheng's arms with blurred eyes for a while before focusing gradually, becoming more energetic. After tidying up some messy hair, he rested his head on Su Sheng's shoulder and said lazily, Honey, you are amazing. You are not bad too. Although he thought about the breakup situation with divergent thinking, but now her body, performance, and the pleasant response in progress make Su Sheng full of energy. After resting for a while, Su Sheng hugged Felicity and went to the bathroom. The water washed the two tired and lazy bodies and then returned to the bedroom to sleep in a hug. Appropriate exercise can enhance the quality of people's sleep, and it is also suitable for changing topics. At least Felicity's call to send Su Sheng has been turned off. All night till dawn, Felicity, who had had breakfast, went to work. Su Sheng took the notebook to the living room, monitoring Laurel's situation while browsing the news on the internet. Gotham, Central City, Metropolis, etc. Laurel hadn't been to the factory of Quinn Industries for several days, as if what happened last time was completely past tense. Her life is very regular at 3 o'clock every day. She leaves home in the morning to go to school, and goes home directly after school, acting like a primary school student. Therefore, Su Sheng's life in the past few days has also become very regular. During the day, he goes online and monitors Laurel's location by the way. In the evening, Felicity comes back to chat and watch TV, and then does some intense exercise before going to bed. Felicity is getting more and more radiant these days. The creaking voice sounded on time, and Felicity suddenly shouted excitedly. Moved, moved. Isn't I moving all the time? I mean Laurel's position has moved. Felicity pointed sideways to the notebook next to her, which showed that the red dot at Laurel's position was indeed moving, as if she had come out of the house. I came out of the house so late, will she go to you? Felicity looked at Su Sheng excitedly. Su Sheng cast a glance and retracted his gaze. Although Laurel finally did something to make him happy, he still had to do the things in front of him first, and Felicity soon had no time to think about other things. The bright moonlight swayed the earth. There are few pedestrians on the streets of the slums. Only in the corners, you can occasionally see a few homeless people sleeping on the street. In front of the factory of Quinn Industrial, Laurel wears sportswear carrying a bag and looks around and takes a few deep breaths. After taking a sigh of relief, he began to retreat, sprinting, leaping high and grabbing the iron gate. The two-meter-high iron gate made her a little strenuous, and it took her for a long time to climb over. After landing, Laurel opened the bag and took out two things. Flashlight, electric shock device. The darkness and empty space of the abandoned factory made the light of the flashlight appear extremely bright. According to memory, Laurel soon came to the place where he was kidnapped last time. The curved steel bar was still on the ground, and her voice echoed in the quiet space. Is there anyone? I'm here. Su, Su Sheng, are you there? Laurel asked softly and tentatively but didn't get any response. Isn't he absent? A rush of Roar's heat suddenly blew around his neck, Laurel shuddered subconsciously, turned and turned on the electric shock, and slammed behind him. Z Z Z. The electric blaster emits faint electric light and sound. Laurel only felt that his wrist was tightened and he was grasped. The flashlight subconsciously shone it and suddenly found that Su Sheng was standing in front of him holding his wrist holding the electric blaster. Su Sheng smiled and looked at the electric shock device in her hand, grasping the fingers of her wrist slightly hard. Laurel snorted the electric shock device and instantly dropped his hand to the ground. Click. The landing sound was clear. Laurel shook slightly instinctively and then found that Su Sheng's hand holding his wrist was strangely lit up with a blue light, as if, like the light of an electric shock device. With a crackling sound, Laurel instantly felt an electric current upload from his hand, making herself tremble. She stared at Su Sheng in disbelief and was stunned. After falling to the ground, her body twitched slightly. Ignoring Laurel who fell on the ground, Su Sheng looked down at his hands. The electric current shuttles at the fingertips, as his superimposed power begins to grow thicker and brighter, and finally spread all over the body. There are crackling noises in the air, and the dazzling blue light illuminates the surroundings. At the moment Su Sheng descends like Thor, with irresistible majesty. 
Although Su Sheng knew that the ability of the disciple could indeed replicate the power of matter, he had never had the opportunity to try. The past replication was passive acceptance, and what was replicated was nothing. Just now he saw the electric shock device, and he had a whim to try to see if he could replicate the power of the electric shock device. The result was very smooth. Although the power of this kind of electric shock device for self-defense is not strong, the initial strength is not important to Su Sheng, because he can stack power infinitely, even if it is just a small electric current of the electric shock device, it can also be stacked to destroy it. The power of heaven and earth. Ring Ling Ling. The bell ringing from Laurel's bag interrupted his thoughts. Su Sheng put away the electric current, bent over and found the phone in her bag. There is no unfamiliar number labeled name. Su Sheng thought for a while and pressed the switch, followed by Felicity's eager voice from inside. Is it you? Felicity. Su Sheng was a little surprised that she actually called Laurel on the phone. Hearing Su Sheng's voice, Felicity breathed a sigh of relief and said eagerly, there are seven or eight well-equipped people who are definitely not policemen coming in. Get out of there. Can you identify them? Su Sheng cast a glance at Laurel, who had fainted to the ground, and asked with a chuckle. Yes, but, find it and tell me. Su Sheng didn't hang up the phone but just put it in his pocket. Then he picked up two steel bars on the ground and gently broke them with both hands. At least two steel bars with thick fingers were instantly bent into a U-shape. Su Sheng then pulled Laurel up from the ground and brought it to the wall, his body straightened and his arms extended. The U-shaped steel bar wrapped her arm directly into the wall. The sturdy wall was easily penetrated like a tofu drag's project, and the other side was made in the same way, and Laurel was fixed to the wall in a blink of an eye. Poor Laurel has only seen Su Sheng twice, but fainted both times and was fixed by steel bars both times. Last time it was on the ground, this time it was on the wall. Fortunately, Su Sheng didn't strip her clothes off this time, at least not now. I found it. Felicity's voice rang from the phone. Su Sheng answered the phone and heard Felicity say in surprise, most people wear masks and it is difficult to find their looks and characteristics, but one person should be their leader. Dinah Lance, Kun Tin Lance's ex-wife, Laurel's mother. I tried to investigate her detailed information but found that the level of confidentiality is as high as yours. She won't have anything to do with you, right? I have nothing to do with her. Su Sheng said with a chuckle. You did a good job. When I go back to reward you, I hang up first. Be careful yourself. Su Sheng hung up the phone and deleted the call log, and then pointed the flashlight Laurel brought at her. A bright beam hit her, and Su Sheng stood by. At the entrance of the plant, the door was gently pulled open. Gululu. A flashing thunder was thrown in, and the dazzling light illuminates the entire plant. Immediately after the door was suddenly opened vigorously, people in combat uniforms and masks rushed up. These people are well organized and experienced. The moment they came in, they found the target's muzzle aimed instantly, but, they found that the target person didn't seem to be dazzled by the flash and thunder, instead they had time to look at them with a smile. Da da da. The sound of high heels sounded from the door, and a middle-aged woman with a paralyzed face came in from the door. Glancing at Su Sheng and Laurel on the wall, she frowned slightly just about to speak. At this time, the smiling Su Sheng suddenly moved. Z Z Z. The electric light lit up on his body, Su Sheng raised his hand and slammed a finger in their direction. Boom. The electric current increased countless times and rushed out fiercely, transforming into a blue python with an open blood basin in the air and swallowing these people in an instant. In the snake's belly, in the electric light, the guns in these people's hands exploded instantly, screams and groans sounded, and these people fell to the ground one after another. The electro-optical python roared and stopped suddenly in front of the middle-aged woman, and then slowly turned, the blue electro-optical body surrounded her, huge amounts of snake head suspended beside her, and an electric current like a letter was constantly beside her. Flickering, the electric current in the air caused her hair to float one by one. She didn't move, watching Su Sheng approaching without squinting, she seemed extremely calm. Are you surprised? Are you surprised? Su Sheng asked with a smile. Puff through. The middle-aged woman suddenly sat on the ground, her eyes flashing shock and horror without squinting just now. I thought you were so calm because of your knowledge and knowledge. 
The contrast between the front and the back made Su Sheng faintly stunned and then burst into laughter. Talk about your identity. Dina Lance glanced subconsciously at the electro-optical python next to her, and then at her daughter fixed on the wall in the distance and the agent team who fell on the ground unconsciously, her throat wriggling uncontrollably. The investigation data does not say that he still has such a super ability. Have you ever heard of Tianyanwe? Tianyanwe is a special department under the United States government, which is responsible for understanding and handling Superman-type incidents. She watched Su Sheng slowly speaking in shock. What you did in Gotham has threatened the security and peace of human society, so we need to talk to you. Although the government organizations in the 600th world do not have the same sense of presence as in the Marvel world, Su Sheng has heard of it. It's just that Laurel's mother Dinah Lance is actually a member of the Sky Eye, so it is the Sky Eye who made her files confidential. This is how you talk about it. Su Sheng glanced at the agents lying on the ground behind him, shaking his head in chuckles. Dinah Lance said, This is a necessary means of protection before you are uncertain about your attitude, so they didn't shoot, didn't they? What's more, you seem to have kidnapped an innocent person now. I can't judge what you want to do. What? If you let her go, I am willing to solemnly apologize to you and have a good talk. It's another one who uses an apology as a bargaining chip. Su Sheng shook his head slightly. Why don't you understand? When you don't have chips, you should apologize early and fight for opportunities, but when you have chips, you don't need to apologize at all. With that said, Su Sheng turned and walked towards Laurel, who had not yet woken up. What a beautiful face. Looking at Laurel, who was hanging his head slightly, Su Sheng stretched out his fingers with a chuckle, and the flash of fingertips stroked her cheeks. Zzz. Laurel's face trembled slightly. What are you going to do? Dinah Lance shouted with excitement in an instant. Do you think I didn't know that she was your daughter? Su Sheng squinted at Dina Lance. Originally, she was not dangerous, I just wanted to give her a choice. Definitely, this is also to satisfy my own interests. But not necessarily anymore. Sorry. Dinah Lance was stunned, followed by a straightforward apology. Not enough. Su Sheng shook his head slightly. Dina Lance stood up slowly and walked towards Su Sheng silently, Su Sheng looked at her with interest. Step by step, Dina Lance stopped a few steps away from Su Sheng, and suddenly knelt down with a thud. I'm sorry that I chose the wrong way to meet you. If you get angry because of my behavior, I hope you can let my daughter go to me. I, only her daughter is left. Just be decisive and sincere. Su Sheng looked at Dina Lance, who was kneeling on the ground, and said with a smile, Look at your age and love your daughter, and I should forgive you according to the truth, but I don't want to. You say me what you did in Gotham has threatened the security and peace of human society. Didn't you find the wrong person? My name is Su Sheng, not Bane. Although it has nothing to do with justice, I killed Bane and saved Gotham. You said I threatened the security and peace of human society. Dinah Lance said solemnly. We have investigated you, extreme self, selfishness, and typical antisocial personality disorder. Although you are occasionally friendly and easy to get along with, it depends on your mood, and most of your actions are driven by instinctive desires. The unpredictability is very strong, and you are very aggressive and destructive. It sounds like the standard configuration of a villain. Su Sheng smiled brightly. It's a pity that I can't stand scrutiny, who is not selfish. If Laurel was not your daughter, would you just kneel down and apologize? When you are in a good mood, you will be friendly and easy to get along with, and even when you are in a bad mood. Will be indifferent and even quarrel with others, right? Drinking water, eating, making love, shopping, who is not driven by instinctive desire? You will only do it if you want. Just from the character analysis, I was classified as a threat, a villain, and even ignored my behavior to save Gotham. This is a typical extreme ego mentality. Let me guess, if I cooperate and obey, you might be if you control me, you may lose your freedom, or you may lose your life or become cannon fodder to do things for you. If I don't cooperate with you, you will regard me as a threat and destroy me. Actually, it has nothing to do with character and behavior, and it has nothing to do with justice and evil. It is so high sounding that it's just one sentence. Children are right and wrong, and adults only look at the pros and cons, right? Dinah Lance was silent for a while and nodded slowly, right? So the decides the head. 
Su Sheng smiled. I like your frankness, so you should have heard all of you, Miss Laurel. In this case, what should you say to me? Laurel wakes up. Dinah Lance looked at her daughter subconsciously, and saw her daughter raised her head and opened her eyes in a complex silence. In the past few days, Laurel had not made up his mind whether to find Su Sheng or not until tonight. The mother suddenly appeared at home and confessed to her as the secret agent of Tiantianyan, and then asked why Su Sheng came to her. After she finished speaking, her mother said that Su Sheng was very dangerous and needed to be controlled. She also said that she would know from him about the real murderer behind the scenes, so Laurel decided to come to Su Sheng today. I just didn't expect to be stunned by the weird horror when I saw Su Sheng, and I didn't expect to hear the conversation between my mother and Su Sheng when I woke up. Whether it is the mother of, righteous, or the, evil, Su Sheng, they are different from what she had previously imagined and thought. It seems that you don't know what I should do, so follow my method. Su Sheng said with a chuckle. One must die. Hearing Su Sheng's words, Dinah Lance and Laurel were shocked. Are they going to choose between their mother and daughter? I, I, the two yelled out almost at the same time. Su Sheng laughed blankly. The love between mother and daughter is very touching, but at least listen to me to finish talking. The person who died is either the person in charge of the Sky Eye Society, or the murderer behind the gold medal queen. Choose one. Not their mother and daughter, but the person in charge of the Sky Eye Society or the real murderer behind the gold medal queen. Is this still optional? Dinah Lance, as the agent of the Sky Eye Club, knows how difficult Amanda Waller is to kill. Even if she succeeds by luck, the Sky Eye Club will be hunted endlessly by the United States government. On the contrary, although she didn't know who was behind the accident of the gold medal Quinn, what kind of strength and power she had, but killing him to avenge Dina Lance for her daughter did not have any psychological burden at all, and she could still use her eyes to see afterwards. Strength in the aftermath. What if we don't choose? Dina Lance asked Su Sheng. Su Sheng said nothing. But in this case, if you don't choose, you might kill them, right? Dinah Lance took a deep breath. In this case, I choose the murderer who killed my daughter. Tell me his identity and I will kill her in the fastest time. You can't change it after you choose, are you sure? Sure. What about you? Su Sheng looked at Laurel. Although she didn't want to choose, at the moment, she could only nod her head and agree. Su Sheng patted Laurel's little face with satisfaction and said to Dina Lance, people will leave it to her to kill, you can go. Dina Lance was anxious in an instant. She's just an ordinary person, you do this to let her go to death, tell me the identity of that person, one week, no, three days, you give me three days and I promise to kill him. I don't care when he will die but she must kill people. You are not qualified to bargain. After all, I am a villain. Su Sheng smiled brightly. Villain. Dinah Lance felt very ironic when she heard the word. You can follow her dynamics, but I advise you not to provide any help. Although I will not kill you or her, I will kill Quentin Lance. Su Sheng said leisurely. Dinah Lance may sacrifice her ex-husband for her daughter, but Laurel will never harm her father, so even if she offers her help, Laurel will not accept it and may even take the initiative to expose it for fear of her misunderstanding. Dinah Lance and Laurel's faces were very ugly. Don't be frustrated, you can continue to trouble me if you can't help Laurel. What if you were lucky to kill me? Then don't worry about her safety and you don't have to be threatened by me. You can also fly far and high, maybe I lose interest if I can't find you for a while. Seeing the ugly looks of the two, Su Sheng made suggestions for them very seriously. Come on, I am optimistic about you. I'll contact you tomorrow. Su Sheng smiled at Laurel, turned and walked away. When his figure left the factory building, the electro-optical python suspended in the distance disappeared, and the factory building fell into dimness for an instant, only the light of the flashlight shone on Laurel's body alone. The mother and daughter looked at each other, Dinah Lance was silent and wanted to put her daughter down, but, the steel stripes didn't move. When Dinah Lance took a lot of effort to put her daughter down, Su Sheng had already returned to the apartment. As soon as he opened the door and entered, Su Sheng saw Felicity sprang from the sofa neatly and threw himself directly into his arms. Are you okay? I'm worried to death. I can see it. Su Sheng patted Felicity on the back and said with a chuckle. Wearing this way at home in the middle of the night, 
are you planning to run with me at any time? Aren't you really going to run? Felicity raised her head to look at Su Sheng. It's not necessary for the time being, so take off your clothes and wait for me in the bedroom. I will go after a shower. Su Sheng bowed his head and kissed her and let go to the bathroom. Felicity let out a long sigh of relief and turned and walked back to the bedroom. It didn't take long for Felicity to see Su Sheng coming in after taking a shower. She wanted to ask him what happened. As soon as Su Sheng came over, she hugged herself and kissed him. After a while, she made a creaking sound from the bedroom again. It sounded, it was already the next morning when she wanted to ask again. Because of last night's exercise, Felicity only had time to confirm with Su Sheng that she didn't need to run, and then went out to work in a hurry. Ask the others when they come back. Soon after she went out, Su Sheng noticed that Laurel was also coming out of the house to go to school. Remember the route, bring the key and carry the bag. Su Sheng also went out. Stop and don't run. Fak, if you have the ability, you can chase me up and kill the policeman. As soon as he came out of the apartment, Su Sheng heard shouts from a distance. Following the sound, it seemed that a middle-aged policeman was chasing a black man who grabbed a bag. The nearby pedestrian stepped away in horror. The black man satirized the police behind him proudly, and ran towards Su Sheng's direction. Quentin Lance. Su Sheng somewhat accidentally recognized the middle-aged policeman chasing the black man. Isn't this Laurel's father? Seeing them get farther and farther, the black man gets closer and closer to him, Su Sheng who happened to get in the way took a step back and walked away. Seeing his actions, the blacks looked arrogant and proud, but Quentin Lance was unwilling to do so. This is the city of Starling, and no citizen is willing to help the police. The black man came running fast, and while running, he took a moment to glance at Su Sheng and showed an expression that counts you. Su Sheng smiled and leaned forward with his left foot. The running black man leaned forward and flew out instantly, landing on the ground and gliding for a long time before stopping. The surroundings are extremely silent. No one thought that this smiling teenager would do this. Quentin Lance was stunned and hurried to catch up with him and put on handcuffs on the black man's arm, and said gratefully to Su Sheng at the same time, thank you for your help. It's a matter of raising your hand. Su Sheng smiled brilliantly and watched Quentin Lance lift up the blood-stained black man, Tusk, this is the legendary face break. When the two were talking, a woman panting and wearing professional attire ran from behind, and said to Quentin Lanz gratefully, thank you, thank you very much. There is a very important law in this bag. Files, if they are lost, it will be very troublesome. If you want to thank her, thank her. If it weren't for his willingness to help, I'm afraid you won't be able to get your bag back. Quentin Lance handed the bag over and looked around. The pedestrians around each bowed their heads and quickened their pace, as if nothing had happened. Thank you very much for your help. The woman in professional attire took out a business card from her bag and solemnly handed it to Su Sheng. My name is Anna Rowling and I am a lawyer. If there is anything I can help, you can call me at any time. Okay. Su Sheng took the business card and turned to Quentin Lands. Can you borrow your phone? I had an appointment with someone to meet, but now. Definitely. Quentin Lance handed the phone over enthusiastically. Su Sheng smiled at him thankfully, holding the phone and turning around and dialing Laurel's number. After a few sounds, Laurel's somewhat puzzled voice was heard. Dad, what's the matter? We made an appointment to meet today. You shouldn't forget it. Su Sheng asked in a relaxed tone. It's you. Why did you have my dad's call? What did you do to him? I have promised your terms, why are you? Laurel recognized Su Sheng's voice, thinking of his threat yesterday and now take it again when her father called herself, she panicked. My dear, don't be angry, let's meet and say okay. It's still the same place, I can be there in about half an hour. Su Sheng said softly before hanging up and returning it to Quentin Lance, thanks. Like what you said. Quentin Lance returned the phone with a smile. He didn't know his effort but scared his daughter. Can I go now? Su Sheng asked. Definitely. Su Sheng smiled politely at Quentin Lance and Anna Rowling, and left. Twenty minutes later, in front of the gate of the Quinn factory, Laurel, with an anxious look, saw Su Sheng appear and hurriedly greeted him. What did you do to my father? Su Sheng chuckled softly. I just ran into your father who helped him catch a bag thief. 
By the way, I just used his phone to contact you. Really? Laurel was skeptical. Don't you know if you give him one? Su Sheng said casually. Laurel took out the arc hesitation and struck it over. A few seconds later there was a noisy and busy voice on the phone. Is there anything? I'm busy here. No, it's okay. Then hang up first. Quentin Lance hung up before Laurel could say the second sentence. Just about to put it down, Quentin Lance subconsciously flipped through the call records. There was no unfamiliar number. The last call was her daughter's number. Did you delete it after the fight? Quentin Lance mumbled without thinking, put away the phone and got busy. Remember not to be so stupid in the future. If a villain uses the phone of someone you know to call you, remember to confirm the situation first. Don't be stupid and come over directly. Looking at Laurel, who put away the phone with a sigh of relief, Su Sheng felt that if someone sent her e, Su Sheng, make money. She might follow this message. Who knows what you will do? Laurel murmured in his heart, secretly. Have you brought money? Su Sheng asked suddenly. Take it, take it. Come with me. Su Sheng patted her shoulder, leading the way. After walking for about 10 minutes, Su Sheng took her to the door of a hotel. What are you doing here? Laurel asked suspiciously. Do you want to be outside when you open the room? I don't care if you don't mind. Laurel didn't want to choose to open the room or outside, but when Su Sheng saw that she hadn't answered for a long time and was about to pull her away, she could only choose to open the room. Enter the hotel, open the room, pay the money, and get the key. Su Sheng put his arms around Laurel with a reluctant face and entered the room. The door closed, and Laurel was nervous when she saw Su Sheng took out the camera from her bag and pointed at her face that turned pale in an instant. Take off, Su Sheng said. Laurel gritted her teeth and looked at Su Sheng resentfully, and took it off reluctantly. She dared not resist. She is not afraid of death, but she is afraid that Su Sheng will not let her family go. One by one, when she was innocent, Su Sheng found a good angle to fix the camera, then turned around and took out a tape measure from her bag and came to her and began to measure her figure carefully. What do you want to do? Laurel did not dare to resist at the mercy. Help you make a dress. Su Sheng answered casually, squeezing at the same time. You have a better figure than my girlfriend. You still have a girlfriend. Laurel sneered. Let's introduce you to each other later. Su Sheng put the tape measure away and turned back to pick up the camera and look at it, and finally put it back in the bag together. Although your figure is good, your physical fitness can only be regarded as average. In the future, you will need to strengthen your physical strength and strength. Only with a good body can you defeat your enemies. Like you. For example, the behind-the-scenes murderer who caused the accident on the gold medal Quinn and killed your sister. Su Sheng didn't care about Laurel's little resistance. His power is all over Starling City, so once your identity is exposed, it will be troublesome, and his personal strength is very strong. From physical skills alone, even if I train you to death, your ability may not be able to win, so I will help. You prepare some gadgets. All you have to do is train, train, train again, and then start with his minions. Seeing Su Sheng's serious look, Laurel was lost. Although she knows that Su Sheng may not be a bad person, but from his unscrupulous behavior, it can be determined that he is not a good person. But Laurel didn't understand why he was staring at him, let alone whether he wanted to hurt himself or help himself. Do you know Sarah? Laurel couldn't help asking. Sarah. We haven't seen it. Su Sheng shook his head. Then why are you so persistent to let me avenge Sarah? Laurel asked inexplicably. I definitely want you to become a black canary in advance so that the future legendary team can find me. By the way, arrange another, part-time, job for Felicity. Su Sheng looked at Laurel and smiled and said, want to know. I won't tell you. You just need to make yourself stronger now. You should know the simple physical training methods. Let's get started. Now. Laurel was stunned to pick up the clothes and put them on. No. Just practice like this, at least my eyes won't be boring. Su Sheng took her clothes first and threw them on the bed and lay down, his chin slightly raised. Start your performance. Laurel gritted his teeth and glared at Su Sheng shamelessly, without moving. Su Sheng smiled without saying a word and raised his finger. The electric current flickered and jumped directly. What? Laurel shivered violently. I didn't mean to urge you, but it does. 
Su Sheng smiled and raised his finger. Laurel started reluctantly. This persecuted sense of shame made her uncomfortable at first, wishing to find a place to sew in, but gradually Laurel found that Su Sheng hadn't been staring at herself at all. Even if her eyes were on her, there was no such thing as her eyes. The disgusting feeling, on the contrary, seems to be supervising oneself. Once he stopped or slowed down, he would raise his finger to, stimulate, himself to continue training. Gradually Laurel began to concentrate. No matter what Su Sheng's purpose is, it is always right for him to become stronger. The law may be able to maintain justice, but strength can protect itself. Unknowingly, the morning passed by sweating like this. When she heard Su Sheng said that she could stop, Laurel seemed to hear the sound of nature. What shame, what anger, she just wanted to lie on the ground motionless now. Looking at Laurel, who looked like a dead dog, Su Sheng smiled dumbly, and kicked it lazily. Don't pretend to be dead, get up and take a shower and get dressed and prepare to go. Let me rest. As the saying goes, everything is hard at the beginning, then hard in the middle, and hard at the end. Anyway, it's so hard. Why don't you take a break? Get up quickly. Su Sheng didn't mean to pity Shang Yu at all. Seeing Laurel refuse to get up, just drive. Powered up. Z Z Z. Laurel got up suddenly with a oops, and ran into the bathroom like a windy woman. After a while, Laurel took a shower and dressed neatly and went out with Su Sheng. Just then, the door of the next room opened and a middle-aged man walked out. This person looked at Laurel, whose legs and feet were weak and flushed, and looked at Laurel again. Su Sheng, who looked relaxed and free as usual, stretched out his thumb, admiring it. Su Sheng nodded modestly with a smile, so so. The sun is scorching and the sun is dazzling. Su Sheng, who just came out of the hotel, tilted his head slightly, the sun swayed on Laurel's body, long brown hair shawl, exquisite face with redness, and a slightly lazy expression exuding charming charm. Shall we go back again? Su Sheng said suddenly. Go back. Didn't you just come out? The room has retired. Laurel was stunned and turned to look at Su Sheng. As soon as he turned his head, he saw him looking at him, his dark eyes filled with interest and possessiveness. This is different from the look in the eyes when supervising his exercise before, it is the kind of desire for men and women who want to own themselves. This kind of direct gaze made Laurel subconsciously avoid the eye contact, clearly wearing her clothes tightly, but she was even shyer than when he looked naked during exercise. Laurel didn't know what to do. If he persecuted himself when he first opened the room or just after the exercise, he might feel resentful but would submit, but now Su Sheng asked her and she didn't know that she would do it. Forget it, leave some freshness. Su Sheng said lightly when Laurel was embarrassed. I won't supervise you during the afternoon exercise, just arrange it yourself. Laurel nodded subconsciously and saw that Su Sheng had waved away, and she also left here in a daze. Not long after I walked, I saw my mother greeted me with worry and anger. Are you all right? That guy didn't do anything to you, right? Laurel shook his head. Really? Dinah Lance didn't believe it. I took my daughter to the hotel early in the morning. When I came out, my daughter blushed and her legs were soft. As a person who came over, she would naturally think of something. Laurel nodded and said, Dina Lance frowned. Didn't say who is behind the scenes. Didn't bully her daughter, just supervise her exercise. Dinah Lance thought about it and decided to wait and see for the time being. She had reported what happened last night. After all, the death of several agents is not a trivial matter. The instructions given to her above were to collect Su Sheng's intelligence as much as possible temporarily. After separating from Laurel, Su Sheng didn't return to the apartment but walked aimlessly on the street. What is the standard configuration of the hero? Uniforms and equipment are essential for training Laurel to become Black Canary in advance. Su Sheng had thought about it a long time ago. The uniform can go to Wayne Enterprise. Anyway, the identity of Talia Al Gol has not been exposed. Now he is the largest shareholder of Wayne Group. He got a uniform based on the photo taken. It should be easy, right? Regular equipment can also be obtained from Wayne Enterprise, as for the iconic special equipment Sonic Equipment, you can go to the center city to find Cisco Raymond. Although I don't know each other, I don't have money, but is it important? Unimportant. Unknowingly, Su Sheng found himself in a park, 
even though the sun was scorching, many people still had lunch or dates here. Looking for a big shady tree to sit on the grass, Su Sheng looked around leisurely and wondered waiting for Felicity to come back from get off work to help her contact Talia El Gol. The sunlight passed through the branches, and a woman suddenly appeared from behind the tree, with long burgundy hair and a black dress. After running over, she looked back and it seemed that someone was chasing her. This time she saw Su Sheng sitting leaning on the tree, and her eyes lit up instantly. She turned around and walked quickly to Su Sheng and directly sat on his lap, holding her hands around him, and at the same time, her hands hooked Su Sheng's neck and kissed him directly. Very proactive, enthusiastic, and dedicated. As if the next moment, the sky is going directly to the floor. Her skills are jerky but very active, holding Su Sheng tightly as if to blend into his body. Ha <laughs> ha. She suddenly snorted and then felt that she was holding her hand and turned her off and lying on the ground. The next moment she felt the other person pressing on her body, with her arms on top of her shoulders. The supporting hands hugged his head and kissed again. This made her a little angry and panicked, but she soon realized that this posture could cover herself more. After a slight surprise, she quickly relaxed and responded to the other party, unknowingly changing from pretending to true devotion. Running footsteps sounded from the side, and two men in black suits, black trousers and sunglasses, dressed in standard black ran over. After taking a look at the affectionate men and women on the ground, their eyes quickly turned away. Even if Europeans and Americans are open in public places like parks to see such intimate behavior, they will still be a little embarrassed and will subconsciously avoid them. Look separately. Looking around and not finding the target, the two men in black whispered a word and found them separately. The footsteps drifted away, but the affectionate men and women did not stop. For a long time, the immersed girl suddenly felt the other party's departure and opened her eyes blankly, and saw that the other party's handsome and handsome face was smiling but not smiling. Although a little embarrassed and shy, the girl smiled. Can you get up from me first? Su Sheng chuckled and turned over and lay down. The girl sat up and tidied up her clothes and hair. At the same time, she confirmed that the man in black had left the park and then said to Su Sheng. Thank you for helping me. My name is Helena. How about you? Su Sheng. You have great skills. You weren't the first to say that, and it won't be the last. Su Sheng turned to look at Helena, supporting her head with one hand and putting one on her lap and chuckled. I can't do it here, I think continue to another place. Helena looked at Su Sheng's hand and said with a smile but a smile, want to fall in love with me. I'm afraid you won't dare. My name is Helena Bettinelli, my father Frank Bettinelli, the leader of the famous crime syndicate in Starling, wants to get me. You are not afraid of being killed by my father, Shenhai feeds the fish. What are you afraid of? I didn't plan to fall in love with you, how exciting it is to run after finishing up. Su Sheng said with a smile. Are you really afraid? Try it. Seeing Su Sheng eager to try, Helena Pist smiled. No today. I finally got rid of them to go to Central City. I can tell you my number. If you are really not afraid, you can call me at any time. Su Sheng slapped his legs and said with a smile, Is it a coincidence? I also want to go to Central City. Do you really want to go to Central City or are you afraid to miss the opportunity? Helena asked suspiciously afterwards. Both. Forget it, I'll drive, you go to the side of the road and wait for me. Good. The two separated and Su Sheng walked to the side of the road. About 10 minutes or so, a sports car stopped in front of Su Sheng, the door opened, and Helena bent down and shouted at him. Su Sheng got into the car, and the roar sounded. The sports car sprang out with a swish. How far Starling is from the central city Su Sheng is really unclear, but Helena should be sure to come back before dark when Helena chooses this time. Speaking of her, she is a strange woman who is good at cheating, or the kind that can't be counted without cheating. As a mafia, the daughter of the criminal syndicate specifically opposed her lousy. At the beginning, she just collected evidence and prepared to report. She directly became a huntress and prepared to kill her relatives several times, until his father was accidentally killed by others in the exchange of fire, and her cheating trip was considered to be over. She briefly joined the Green Arrow team and the Bat family, and also worked as an oracle for a while, but unfortunately she was cruel and did not have the standard of not killing, so her philosophy was not consistent and she was again dressed as a huntress. 
Later, she joined the Justice League and learned how to control her temper and cruelty, but Batman opened her on the grounds that the League didn't need a killer. Don't take me to play. Okay, then I will find someone to play with. She and Black Canary Laurel Lance, Barbara Gordon, who was codenamed Oracle during the Paralysis period, formed a small organization, the Raptor Team. The result is getting bigger and bigger, Catwoman, Katana, Poison Ivy have all joined this team, definitely now it seems that Helena is still in the beginning period of cheating. Barbara Gordon, who is not yet paralyzed, Laurel Lance who has just started training, and Helena in front of him. This is to unlock the rhythm of the Raptor team. Su Sheng couldn't help laughing. What are you laughing at? Helena turned to Su Sheng and asked. What are you doing in Central City? Su Sheng smiled and shook his head and asked. Something was made to order. Helena said casually. What about you? What are you going to do? I want to find someone to order something. Helena gave him a blank glance. It is not convenient to take you where I go. If you are really not afraid of death, you will have two hours to wait until I finish getting my things. Good. Su Sheng responded with a smile. Entering the central city, Helena parked her car at a good grade hotel. You get off here, right? I'll come here to find you in half an hour. Helena said. Su Sheng simply nodded and got out of the car. When he came over, he saw that the advanced lab was not far from here. Watching Helena drive away, Su Sheng leisurely walked towards the cutting edge laboratory. The particle explosion has not yet occurred, and the cutting edge laboratory has not been closed. Su Sheng was stopped by the security guard as soon as he arrived at the door. Excuse me sir, what can I do for you? I'm looking for Cisco Ramon. Su Sheng said with a smile. Excuse me, what's your name? The security guard asked while preparing to contact, but at this time the door opened but two people walked out. One man and one woman. The woman has long curly hair and shawl. The smile is bright and the demeanor is a lady, the man is not tall and has a dark complexion with shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder hair. It is the future vibe Cisco Raymond and the frost killer Caitlin Snow. Su Sheng smiled at the security guard and walked over to Cisco Raymond and Caitlin Snow who were talking while walking. Excuse me. Su Sheng stood in front of the two of them with a smile, and the two stopped to look at Su Sheng in doubt, and Cisco Raymond asked. Is there a problem? I want you to help me make something. What? Cisco Raymond stunned and laughed. Sorry, I don't know you. It doesn't matter, it's not important. I want to make a portable sonic device. The shape of the necklace is fine, but I have no materials and no compensation. You can only figure it out by yourself, and it is best to complete it in half an hour. Su Sheng continued to smile and said his request. Cisco Ramont frowned. Did he meet a madman? I won't do anything for you, please get out of it. Really not. Su Sheng asked again. Please get out of the way. Cisco Raymond repeated it resolutely. Okay. Su Sheng sighed disappointedly and slowly raised his hand, and the sizzling electric current sounded in an instant. The electric current shuttled in his hand, and the blue light reflected on Cisco Raymond and on Caitlin Snow's shocked face. Su Sheng asked again as if unwillingly. Now, can it be done? Cisco Raymond stared blankly at Su Sheng's hand filled with electric light. Super ability, this is super ability, there really is super ability. The reaction of Cisco Raymond did not retreat but instead, a look of excitement and excitement appeared on his shocked face, and he asked quickly. How did you do it? Can you generate electricity as you like? What is the maximum electric current? Wouldn't it be electric to yourself? Seeing that Cisco Ramon was so excited that he stretched out his hand to give it a try, Su Sheng followed the security guard who drew his gun with his finger. The lightning hit the security guard instantly. Amid the screams and shaking, the security guard slowly fell to the ground and fainted. What? Cisco Raymond finally reacted, subconsciously blocking in front of Caitlin Snow. You, what are you going to do? Don't mess around, or I, we call the police. I didn't want to make the scene so nervous, I just wanted you to help me make a piece of sonic equipment. Looking at Caitlin Snow who tremblingly took out the phone from his bag, Su Sheng shook his head helplessly and raised his hand to let it go. Electric current. Ah. Caitlin Snow yelled, and Cisco Raymond was also shaken by the transmitted electric current. Boom. The electric current disappeared, Caitlin Snow fainted, and Cisco Raymond took a few steps back and sat on the ground with soft legs. 
Half an hour, I want to see what I want. Su Sheng walked over and picked up the fainted Caitlin Snow, said to Siskoriman before turning and leaving. Caitlin. Siskoriman reacted with a slight twitch and wanted to turn over his phone to call the police, but was stopped by someone, and was helped up. Professor Wells. Sisko Raymond looked at Harrison Wells, the owner of his mentor's cutting-edge laboratory, exclaimed excitedly. Caitlin, Caitlin was taken away by the electric shock madman. Electric shock mad. Siskoriman's habit of naming people has gone deep into his soul. Harrison Wells's face twitched slightly, and he nodded solemnly. I know, I have seen it all, why did he find you? I don't know, I don't know him at all. I suddenly ran over and asked me to help him make a sonic device. There was no material and no compensation for me to figure out a solution. By the way, I only gave me half an hour. Cisco Ramon said hurriedly. He came for sonic equipment, so Caitlin will not be in danger for the time being. Don't call the police. You can make the sonic equipment. I will try to see if I can find him. Harrison Wells patted Cisco. Meng's shoulder seriously relieved. Caitlin will be fine, don't worry. Cisco Raymond nodded heavily. I'm going now. Back in the lab Cisco Raymond began to make sonic equipment, Harrison Wells looked for Caitlin's whereabouts on the computer with a deep expression. At the moment, on the roof of a residential building near the advanced laboratory, Caitlin woke up faintly after being stunned. As soon as she opened her eyes, Caitlin saw Su Sheng who was close at hand, yelled in shock and hurriedly backed away. Su Sheng didn't drew near, but looked at Caitlin Snow who was panicked and said apologetically. Maybe I just got a new ability and I have a strong sense of freshness. I really like electric people recently, so I'm sorry to stun you. You, don't come over, don't come over. Caitlin sat slumped and didn't seem to hear Su Sheng's words clearly, waving her hands indiscriminately and shouting loudly. I won't go there, I just. Don't come over, don't come over you. Su Sheng took a long breath and flashed an electric light on his hand, his eyes swept coldly. Shut up, or I will electrocute you. Caitlin Snow's body froze in fright, and instantly closed her red lips. Don't come over, don't come over, come here, tell me, did I move? Su Sheng said to Caitlin Snow angrily. I found out that you people are sick. Or do you have a tendency to abuse? If you don't listen, do you have to turn your face? Seeing Caitlin Snowsuthers trembling and calming down, Su Sheng squatted down in front of her and smiled. That's right, calm down and be quiet. Don't yell at every turn like the heroine of a dog blood TV series. This will destroy your image in my heart, although I am more interested in the other you. Caitlin Snow looked at him tremblingly, the other me. What's the meaning? I didn't intend to hurt you. You can leave after Cisco Raymond does what I want in half an hour, but before then I hope you can be obedient. Can you do it? Su Sheng said softly asked. Caitlin Snow nodded. Good. Su Sheng patted Caitlin Snow on the head with satisfaction, and asked casually. Have you made a boyfriend? Caitlin Snow shook his head. I didn't pay. It's okay, you're still more suitable for being single. Su Sheng chuckled lightly. Caitlin Snow is not happy anymore. What makes me more suitable for being single? She angrily asked. Why? Why? Definitely is based on your, cough, ability. First, Ronnie Raymond, who is also the fiancé of Caitlin Snow, a member of the Advanced Laboratory, merged with Martin Stein after the Big Bang to form Firestorm and finally died in order to save the city. Followed by Hunter Zolomon, the extreme speed of Earth 2. Rule the Earth 2, playing the Flash Barry Allen did not want the results also died. Although the last alchemist Julian Dorn didn't hang up, he just slipped away. Caitlin Snow is doomed to a lonely and dying rhythm. Patting Caitlin Snow on the shoulder, Su Sheng seriously showed his fearless spirit. Remember don't make a boyfriend. If you really need it, you can find me. The Buddha said, if I don't go to hell, whoever goes to hell. I have a hard life, you can't kill me. What does it mean to find you if you need it? What does it mean that you don't go to hell, who goes to hell? What makes your life hard, I can't kill you. If I can't beat you, I'll fight with you. Caitlin Snow turned her head to ignore Su Sheng, a baby was very angry, and the baby ignored your posture. However, when angry and angry, Caitlin Snow is not as scared as before. Although this person is very annoying, it seems that he really didn't mean to hurt himself. 
As soon as the fear disappears, curiosity naturally rises. Although she is not obsessed with super ability like Cisco Raymond, as a bioengineer, she is curious about how Su Sheng generates electric current. If possible, she even wants to do a complete inspection of the data. What's your name? Caitlin Snow asked tentatively. Su Sheng, are you from Washa? Are you born with super ability or is it caused by some changes the day after tomorrow? Have you checked your body? Su Sheng asked with a smile. What? Do you want to check it for me? Caitlin Snow first nodded, followed and shook his head. Although there is no confirmed example, your situation should be a genetic change. If I can do a detailed examination for you in the laboratory, I might be able to figure out what you got. The reason for exceeding ability and the upper limit of ability. Caitlin Snow sighed with regret. In this situation, she has no chance to help Su Sheng check her body. If you can keep the secret, how about I come to you when I have a chance to secretly check it for me? The ugly thing is first. If you can't do it then I can only kill you. Caitlin Snow with that said, Su Sheng is also curious about his body structure. Really? Caitlin Snow asked eagerly, his eyes lit up. When? Look at my mood. That's a deal. I won't tell anyone the results of the inspection. I just want to know why. Caitlin Snow was afraid that Su Sheng would regret it and hurriedly said his phone number. You will call me ahead of time when that happens, so I can arrange it. Good. Su Sheng noted the number and nodded. Why do you need sonic equipment? Caitlin Snow suddenly reacted. He has super ability and shouldn't need such equipment. You will know later. Time passed unconsciously during the conversation between the two. Su Sheng did not carry her nor tied her, so he went downstairs and returned to the cutting edge laboratory. At the moment, the door of the cutting edge laboratory. The security guard who had been stunned had been sent to the laboratory for treatment, and Cisco Raymond was standing at the door with Harrison Wells holding a box. Seeing Su Sheng and Caitlin Snow coming over while chatting, the two of them were shocked. What's the situation? Caitlin Snow was kidnapped by Su Sheng. Why are you back now like a friend? Caitlin, are you okay? Cisco Raymond asked worriedly when they saw the two coming over. Caitlin Snow glanced at Su Sheng and shook his head. I'm fine, he didn't do anything to me. That's good. Cisco Ramon handed the box over with a sigh of relief. This is what you want. Su Sheng took it and opened it. Inside the box was a round device with a dial file size, fixed on a two-finger wide black metal ring. Cisco Raymond dutifully began to explain how to use the equipment. Just touch with your fingers to use, and touch to mediate the power of sound waves. After listening to Cisco Raymond's explanation, Su Sheng patted him on the shoulder with satisfaction. You really are a genius. I found you the right one, thank you. It's okay, mainly because the time is too tight or I can do better. After the explanation, Cisco Raymond heard Su Sheng's praise and gratitude and couldn't help feeling regretful and felt that more functions could be added. By the way, where did you put the locator? Su Sheng asked casually as if to remember it inadvertently. On the metal ring, Siskaramang said it directly, and as soon as he finished speaking, he reacted with regret on his face, and he even said it. Seeing Harrison Wells's speechless expression, he tentatively asked Su Sheng. Can you treat it as if you didn't hear it? I'm afraid not. Su Sheng shook his head and directly removed the black metal ring and handed it to Cisco Raymond. Cisco Ramon covered his face and took it. Goodbye everyone. Su Sheng waved his hand and turned away. Seeing him leave like this, Cisco Raymond couldn't help asking. Just forget it. Or, let's call the police. He would have left when the police arrived. Where can I find it? Harrison Wells shook his head. As long as Caitlin is okay, go back to the lab first. Back to the laboratory, Harrison Wells asked Caitlin Snow about Su Sheng. After confirming that she was not injured, he comforted a few words and left. At the moment Su Sheng was standing at the door of the hotel that had an appointment with Helena. After waiting for a few minutes for the roar from far and near, Helena parked the car and walked towards him. You are really waiting for me here. Why not? Su Sheng smiled brilliantly. Let's go. Helena took Su Sheng's arm into the hotel. Pay, take the room card, and as soon as he entered the elevator, Helena voluntarily hooked Su Sheng on the neck and kissed it. Hot kisses. After coming out of the elevator, the two people found the room and opened the door. Su Sheng closed the door easily, and Helena retreated slightly, panting. 
Are you sure? If you let my father know you will be dead. Take off. Su Sheng replied simply. Helena smiled and opened the chain of the skirt with her back. The skirt fell off instantly and then took the initiative to hug Su Sheng again. There is no creaking sound. After all, this is a high-level hotel, but even if there is, it shouldn't be able to cover up Helena's voice. It was crazy. The shouts from the bottom of the horse seemed to let everyone know what she was doing. The blood was accompanied by cruelty, and Helena seemed to be immersed in a certain twisted psychological enjoyment. After a long time, Helena, who had come to rest, smiled softly. It feels really good. I am a little bit reluctant to have an accident. Don't let my father kill you. What you care about will torture you. Expectation is the root of all pain. I am happy to help you relieve the pain. Su Sheng smiled brightly. Helena's smile froze slightly, as if thinking of something, she shook her head after a long while. First of all, you have to live. After speaking, she limped to the bathroom. Helena thought two hours should be more than enough before, but more than two hours have passed since she came out of the hotel and was preparing to return to Starling. It was already dark when she returned to Starling, Helena parked the car aside and turned her head to look at Su Sheng. Tell me your phone number. I will find you if I think. Su Sheng shook his head and said. Why? Helena asked unhappy. Su Sheng smiled and waved to get out of the car. I will find you. Helena yelled after him, but Su Sheng had disappeared into the night on the street. Helena snorted and started the car to go home. As soon as she got home, she saw her father sitting in the living room with a sullen face, and Helena gave a blank expression to roar and prepared to go upstairs. Stop. Aren't you going to explain to me where you went? I didn't go to kill and set fire anyway. You. Frank Bettinelli walked up to Helena and slapped his hand. Snapped. The sound is crisp. Frank Bettinelli stared at his daughter angrily. You have to remember that you are my daughter. No matter what I do, you are my daughter. This cannot be changed. You better understand this as soon as possible. Helena covered her face and coldly watched her father turn upstairs. Check it out for me. I want to know where she has been and who she was with during this time. Frank Bettinelli turned his head and shouted to the butler. Yes. The butler lowered his head in response. He wanted to know who his daughter did and what she did with her. Similarly, Felicity also wanted to know who Su Sheng did and what she did with her. When she came back from get off work, she found that Su Sheng was not at home and started to worry. As a result, when Su Sheng came back, she started to worry. Liza T smelled the perfume that didn't belong to him. Who is she? Felicity pushed his glasses and asked Su Sheng seriously. Who? Su Sheng answered casually. Whose perfume smells on you? Is there? I took a shower, maybe it was afterwards. Su Sheng sniffed and didn't smell anything. Sometimes a woman's nose is better than a police dog. He hugged Felicity and said with a smile. I supervised Laurel training in the morning, and in the afternoon I helped people get rid of the bodyguards at home and took a ride to Central City just back. This is the sonic equipment I bought for Laurel. Please check to see if there are any problems. Su Sheng handed the sonic equipment to Felicity and kissed her on the cheek. I'll take another bath. Is there anything to eat at home? Get some for me. I haven't eaten yet. Seeing Su Sheng walking to the bathroom naturally, Felicity responded blankly. Sonic equipment. Looking down at the equipment in his hand, Felicity went to the kitchen to help him heat up something before returning to the living room to check it. This inspection made Felicity very amazed. The design is very delicate and powerful. The size is not large and easy to carry around. The power of the sound wave is divided into several grades. This thing can play a great role without precautions. How about it? Su Sheng came to Felicity's side and hugged her after taking a shower and eating. Very powerful design, there are no defects in the equipment structure. Felicity said. There is just one problem, users will also be affected when it is launched, and it needs to be prepared in advance. It's okay without a locator. Just go back to the problem you mentioned and get a pair of lowered earplugs. Su Sheng said disapprovingly. Yeah. Felicity nodded. Professional equipment requires professional equipment and materials. Although Felicity can make earplugs that meet her needs, it is difficult for a clever woman to cook without rice. She has no money, no equipment, and no materials, so Su Sheng plans to let Laurel himself to find ways to 
Let Felicity check Talia L. Gore's phone number, and Su Sheng met Laurel at yesterday's small hotel the next day. By coincidence, it was in yesterday's room. Do you have to come here? Laurel asked Su Sheng embarrassedly. What? Afraid of being seen? Su Sheng asked with a smile. I don't have that much money to open a room with you every day. Laurel said bitterly. Then make money. If you want to be a hero who protects the city and punishes sins, you can't have money. Then, this is the equipment I kidnapped for you yesterday. Su Sheng took out the sonic equipment. Laurel was stunned. You kidnapped again. Can't get used to it. Then stop me when you have the strength. Su Sheng said the usage of the equipment and followed. You won't be able to use this stuff for the time being. I'll talk about it when you lay the foundation. Okay, don't get too slow and start today's exercise. In the morning, I will do physical exercises, and in the afternoon I will teach you fighting skills. Life is as if Chang Jian can't resist, so enjoy it. Although Laurel doesn't know whether Su Sheng's behavior is a strong sword, she can only accept it. Silently taking off his coat, Laurel saw Su Sheng lying down on the bed again, gritted his teeth and continued. Just like yesterday. In order to prevent being trained by electric Laurel, she was very focused and meticulous, but even so after the morning training, she was also electrocuted a lot, so she felt that she would be immune to electric current in the future. After taking a shower and taking a break without food, the afternoon fighting training began. Laurel has no basis in fighting, so Su Sheng chose several fighting techniques that can give full play to her physical advantages. They are mainly Muay Thai and French kicking, combined with free fighting in Taekwondo. It would be better to add Wing Chun, but unfortunately the person he copied didn't know how to learn it, and he didn't bother to learn it and had to wait for Batman to come back, anyway, these were enough for Laurel to learn for a while. The concept of Lian Xiangxiu doesn't seem to exist on Su Sheng. If you should do it, you won't be merciful just because Laurel is a woman or a woman without clothes. When the training is over, Laurel's white body is blue and purple. Go back and rest early, don't be late at the same time tomorrow. Su Sheng said to Laurel from the hotel. I may not be able to come tomorrow. Laurel said hesitation. Something. I plan to move out, and I will move tomorrow. Laurel explained. Live by yourself. It's okay, it will be convenient then, then wait until you finish moving. Um. Laurel responded and limped away exhaustedly. Su Sheng went around to find a public phone booth and called Talia Al Ghul. Hey. As soon as he called, Roar heard the cold snort of Talia El Ghul gnashing his teeth on the phone. It's you. Su Sheng chuckled dumbly. Awesome, you remember my voice so deeply, does Bruce Wayne know it? What do you want? Talia El Ghul asked coldly. I want a uniform made of the same Batman material. I will tell you the size and requirements. You can remember it. You are threatening me. Su Sheng paused for a moment, then chuckled. Yes, I'm threatening you. If you don't follow suit, I will break your identity and send out the gadgets you took, how about it? Are you scared? Don't you think I'm shameless? Do you want to kill me? Under what circumstances do you feel uncomfortable? Don't you feel uncomfortable? The daughter of the dignified master ninja, the real murderer who almost destroyed Gotham behind the scenes, Talia El Ghul was trembling with Su Sheng's vain anger. Roar's gasp Roar's gasp was clearly audible, and she suppressed the anger in her heart after a long while, in order to destroy Gotham, the old lady endured it. Hello, you are fine, I. Shinobu endured, but she always felt that her thoughts were incomprehensible without saying a few ruthless words. I'm okay with you, you thought it was Wei Yuan Shinbao. I didn't put you in my eyes again. I have a hammer to use for ruthless words. Just prepare what I want. Su Sheng hits breaking off Talia El Ghul's words made the anger she had endured suddenly rushed up again. I will kill you, sure, I will kill you. Listening to the roar on the phone, Su Sheng tilted his head slightly and said impatiently. Don't yell at my big roar, I was scared by dogs when I was a kid. Do you call me a dog? Do you dare to call me a dog? Dogs are good friends of humans, so why do good friends quarrel? Can't you just sit down and slap each other calmly? Su Sheng said earnestly. Talia El Ghul's chest kept rising and falling, and after a long while she sneered. When I see you, I will slap you. If you can do it. Su Sheng chuckled disapprovingly, then paused to talk about the size and requirements of the uniform. 
Talia El Ghul knew that he was the one who would suffer if he continued to quarrel, just as the said, why did he quarrel? Kill him directly when you see him. Three days later, deliver the things to Frank Bettinelli's house in Starling. It's easy to find out who Frank Bettinelli is by Ethelia El Ghul's ability. After all, he is the leader of the crime syndicate in Starling. Su Sheng would not be so stupid to think that she would deliver things obediently without making any arrangements. If you die a fellow Taoist but not a poor Tao, who is not a pit. Helena shouldn't mind anyway. Hanging up, Su Sheng left. In the Wayne group, the president's office, Talia Al Gol put down the phone and leaned on the chair, thinking with his eyes closed. This size is obviously for women. It doesn't matter who wears it. The important thing is to kill Su Sheng through this opportunity, and get back what he photographed if it doesn't help. She suddenly opened her eyes and thought of someone. The kitten. She was in the same cell as Su Sheng before. With this relationship, she was very easy to approach Su Sheng. Even if she couldn't kill her, she could get back what she wanted with her ability to steal things. As for why Catwoman can help. Didn't she want to wash off the criminal record software? With the bait, can the fish still be caught? Talia Al Gol found Catwoman while having someone make a uniform. Don't look at Catwoman's appearance, the trail is hard to find, but Talia Al Ghul naturally has her own way. After finding Catwoman, as Miranda Tate, she asked Catwoman for help and said that Su Sheng used the photo as a threat to subdue it. She hoped that she could find Su Sheng to get back the filmed items, and in return she could wash off the criminal record. The software is handed over to Catwoman. Catwoman was very impressed with Su Sheng. At first, she was afraid of Bane betraying Batman, but Bane was easily killed by Su Sheng, so she didn't want to provoke Su Sheng. But to wash herself off, Catwoman thought twice and decided to give it a try. Talia El Ghul did not let Catwoman kill Su Sheng because she found that Catwoman would not agree to this condition, let alone she had other arrangements. The three-day period is not long, not short. Talia El Ghul arranged for someone to send the prepared things to Starling, while Catwoman followed along. Starling, Bettinelli's house. Helena stood by the window and glanced outside. At least 20 security guards armed with guns guarded the villa. Putting down the curtains, Helena turned to look at Su Sheng who was lying on her bed and asked in surprise, How did you get in? How can you steal incense and jade if you don't have the ability to steal it? How about? Are you surprised or surprised? Su Sheng said with a smile. My father restrained me from going out last time when I came back and is still looking for you. Do you still have the guts to come to my house? You are dying. Although he was surprised, Helena urged with some worry. You better go, if my father comes back, you won't be able to leave. Su Sheng stood up and raised his hand to drag Helena onto himself, he he with a smile. Your father was looking for me everywhere, but I was sleeping with her daughter in his house. If he knew it, he would be furious. Don't you think this is more exciting? Even if he is the leader of a murderous and arson criminal syndicate, he can't stop him. His daughter was slept in a protected home. But there are two bodyguards outside the door. Helena glanced at the direction of the door. Then you just keep your voice down. Helena's eyes lit up and she whispered. I thought about it, you wait. Speaking, Helena got up and walked to the closet, and then took out a black gag as if to ask for her credit. So you don't have to worry about it being too loud. You have all this stuff. You are really perverted, but. I like it. Seeing her put it on by herself, Su Sheng was about to move instantly. What is a surprise? Unexpected surprises are considered surprises. Since she was still in a new car but opened a house with herself so casually, Su Sheng knew that he had a distorted psychology of torturing herself to avenge his father because of his family and identity, but he really didn't expect to even have this stuff. She is not as well proportioned and slender as Laurel, and not as exquisite and glamorous as Catwoman, but she has a rebellious madness and extreme energy that attracts Su Sheng. The urge to reach the stomach is very strong. Pulling Helena to her side, Su Sheng ran away. There were violent storms and tsunamis. Su Sheng, who had finished surfing, looked at the gadgets she picked off with his arms around Helena, who was exhausted but excited, as if she were in her own home. How did you think of buying this thing? It's just to prevent me from talking in sleep. Helena looked at Su Sheng. If I say, I'm investigating my father's criminal evidence, would you believe it? Believe. Su Sheng nodded affirmatively. Do you really believe it? 
Helena was a little suspicious. You didn't deliberately coax me to follow me, did you? Su Sheng chuckled. You think too much, and it's not that my girlfriend has no such obligation to coax you. There are so many weird things in this world, and you are not the only one who cheats. It's not a big deal. Helena was dumbfounded and asked expectantly. Then are you willing to help me? Unwilling. Su Sheng refused very simply. I'm not interested in your family's grievances. I really think too much, I'm sorry. Helena said quietly, with a look of embarrassment and entanglement on her frowning face, she regretted telling her secret. What if he leaks the wind or betrays himself after being caught by his father? Looking at Su Sheng who was disapproving, Helena's eyes were pleading and expectant. If I am willing to be your lover, you can give you a lot of money as you please. Are you willing to help my mother? I won't let you do adventurous things. I only need you to cooperate with me and let my father pay what he deserves. Cost. Su Sheng considered it seriously for a while, then shook his head. Still not interested. Yes. Helena sighed disappointedly. I don't want to be like this, but I will never allow my plan to be unexpected, so. I'm sorry. Quote. Come here, someone broke into my room. Helena suddenly yelled in panic, and rushed to the door in a mess. Boom. The two bodyguards outside the door rushed in instantly, looking at the disheveled sister file size and the strange man in the room. Who is this person? How did you get in? What did he do to file size sister? Seeing that the bodyguard was stunned, Helena couldn't help shouting. What are you doing in a daze? He just slashed me, and under your protection, he smashed me, killed him, killed him for me. What? Sister File Size just got a strong sword. Why can't I hear the sound? If this is to let the boss know that, under his own protection, Sister File Size has been slashed at home, what's the deal? The two bodyguards didn't dare to think about the consequences for a moment, and shot Su Sheng angrily. Boom. 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 The bullet hit Su Sheng frantically. Hiding behind the bodyguard, sadness and pain flashed between Helena's eyebrows, and she found that she was a little in love with this mysterious, bold, and reckless man. I don't want to be like this, she couldn't help muttering to herself. But soon the expression on her face turned into amazement, looking at Su Sheng who was evading the bullet and smiling at the corner of her mouth in disbelief. How? How is it possible? At such a close distance, two bodyguards with precise marksmanship fired at the same time. How did he escape? Click, click, click. The bullet was out. The two bodyguards looked down at their guns in a daze, is this all right? Is it a fake gun? Boom, boom. Su Sheng walked to the middle of the two bodyguards, holding their lower abdomen in the punch with both hands. Suddenly, the river was overwhelmed, as if hit by a speeding truck, with a grunt, his eyes turned upward, and the burly bodyguard fell to the ground. You really surprise me. Su Sheng stood in front of Helena and spoke with a smile. Helena reacted and slammed her fist to his face in shock. Looking at Helena's face that had been pleased by Chung Wan just now, Su Sheng smiled lightly and avoided his fists, and his knees rushed back. Helena bowed and wrinkled her facial features like Xiami in an instant. Too slow. Su Sheng grabbed Helena's shoulder and threw it over the shoulder. Boom. Her body slammed heavily on the ground, and Helena just felt the painful grin rolling. There were rapid footsteps from the top of the stairs, and the sound of gunfire just now led other security guards in the villa. Seeing the security guard rushing up to shoot, Su Sheng did not hurriedly raise his finger. Sizzling sounds flowed through the air, and the azure blue electric light dazzlingly flickered. The maximum electric current of the electric shock device is no more than 100,000 volts, but unlimited stacking, 10 times. The electric light became huge in an instant. The million volt electric current turned into an electric light python and roared towards the stairs, crackling, and the electric light python rushed down the stairs, and the air began to fill with a burst of chard in an instant. Smell. The security guard lay on the stairs like a coke. On the stairs, there were traces of electric shocks on the walls, and the air was full of heat and exuded a pungent burnt smell. Helena seemed to have forgotten the pain and watched Su Sheng walk down the stairs in despair. Avoiding bullets is enough to shock the world, but just. She doesn't know how to describe it anymore. Is this something human can do? The messy gunfire came from downstairs, followed by the screams of roar alternately, and finally calmed down. 
The security guards at home are probably dead, right? Although these security guards followed his father's work, both hands were stained with blood, but Helena still regretted it. It's not that she regretted the decision to sell and sacrifice Su Sheng. Although this decision made her very sad and distressed, as long as she can achieve her goal, she can even sacrifice herself. She can only say sorry to Su Sheng. What she regretted was that she didn't expect Su Sheng to have such an ability, and now. I am afraid that her purpose cannot be accomplished. She didn't think Su Sheng would let herself go, even if he could, he would not keep a secret for herself. Ding ding ding. The sound of footsteps came from the stairs. Su Sheng walked up with a relaxed expression and grabbed her hair and dragged her down. Helena, who had lost her faith, was dragged downstairs like a dead dog, and dragged all the way to the fountain near the gate of the villa. Was put down. Do you regret it? Su Sheng knelt down and asked with interest. Regret it. She thought of her mother who was beaten by her father every day and died tragically. She thought of the faces of the family destroyed by her father, her eyes gradually focused, Helena said firmly. I only regret not making him pay the price. I know I am sorry for you, so, you can do it. Helena closed her eyes. Su Sheng didn't speak, and didn't do anything. After a while, Helena opened her eyes in surprise. You, why don't you do it? I'm not going to kill you. Su Sheng smiled lightly. Don't kill me. Helena was dazed, and a wave of hope suddenly rose. You, did you forgive me? Su Sheng thought for a while and sat down on Helena, watching Helena holding her breath in pain and chuckles. I told you, what you are, what will torture you, expectation is the source of all pain. I don't expect to sleep with you twice to become more important in your heart than what you insist on. Even if I'm the only person who has slept with you. So I don't mind or be angry that you cheated me for keeping it secret, because I would do it if I did it. People are all selfish, even if they seem to Beshfles's dedication the kind is actually to satisfy one's own spiritual and emotional needs. But I'm not angry, don't mind, it doesn't mean I forgive you. Su Sheng smiled brightly, and the smiling Helena had a premonition of anxiety. Death is a relief for you. You don't care about success or failure. So I won't tell you if I don't kill you. I want you to wander back and forth between hope and despair, and you can't die. Helena felt as if she had fallen into an ice cave and her whole body was cold. Su Sheng's gentle and brilliant smile seemed to her to be more terrifying than the devil. Killing and condemning the heart, but so. Suddenly, the iron gates of the villa's wall slowly opened to the sides, and a luxury car that was going to drive in suddenly stopped. The situation in the villa made them unexpected. Helena's father Frank is in the car. After all, it was the leader of the criminal syndicate who was accustomed to the big wind and waves. Although Frank was shocked, he quickly calmed down. Looking at the strange man sitting on his daughter and the bodyguard in the courtyard who seemed to be struck by lightning, Frank got out of the car with a gloomy expression. The bodyguard and the driver were guarding Frank with guns. Do you know who I am? Frank asked while looking at Su Sheng in deep thought. Frank Bettinelli, the leader of the Starling Crime Syndicate. Su Sheng said as he looked at Frank. Not bad, I thought he would get out of the car in a rage and fire directly or turn around and run away when he was scared. I have hatred with you. Frank asked again gloomily. Su Sheng shook his head. Is that someone hiring you to trouble me? Frank asked again. Su Sheng still shook his head. Frank grinned furiously. Very well, I promise you won't die easily. Turning their heads slightly, the bodyguard and the driver quickly walked towards Su Sheng with guns. Su Sheng stood up and raised his hands in coordination. When the bodyguard and the driver each grabbed his shoulders, the electric current roar screamed out. Boom. Boom. The bodyguard and the driver fell to the ground. Frank squinted his eyes and took a few steps back in horror. He heard Su Sheng smiling and saying, I want your daughter. What, what do you mean? Frank asked calmly. Literally. Su Sheng smiled lightly. Frank took a deep breath, his original fearful eyes became excited. What can you give me? Before I lose interest in her, I will protect you from death. Make a deal. Although it sounds like he only said to protect himself from death and did not say to help himself, Frank agreed without hesitation. What is it that someone with such a weird ability guarantees his safety and sacrifices his disobedient daughter? What's more, if you don't agree, who knows what will happen? 
Frank smiled and walked a few steps towards Su Sheng, but a gunshot suddenly came from a distance. Boom. The bullet hit Frank, and Frank fell to the ground. Su Sheng squinted his eyes. This TM is going to slap me in the face. The bullet pierced Frank's shoulder, and he was lying on the ground with a pale face, clutching his wound, looking as if he was not worried about his life for the time being. It's fine if you don't hang up, or you'll get hit in the face. Su Sheng doesn't care whether Frank is hurt or hurts. He was the one who hit him with this shot. If it is for yourself, copy ability will be activated. His ability is not only infinite replication and infinite stacking, but also comes with an early warning function, so there is no need to worry about the means of latent assassination. At the moment, three people appeared in the direction of the gate. The first person is very eye-catching, with a red dress, dazzling white long hair, and the face of an Asian under his bangs. There were two people behind him, one holding a gun, the other carrying a black box that looked like a piano box. White porcelain. Frank, lying on the ground, saw the woman making a resentful voice, and said to Su Sheng anxiously and quickly. She is a member of the China Triad Association who specializes in drug sales. I just killed her person. She came to kill me. You promised me, I will give my daughter to you, and you will protect me from death. Frank reminded Su Sheng of the agreement with him worriedly. Helena, who heard Frank's words like a dead dog, had no expression on her face. Bai Zi sneered with disdain, and said to Su Sheng with a respectful expression. Hello, Mr. Su Sheng, my name is Bai Si, I'm here to give you something. Send it over, Bai Si said. The person with the box next to him walked to Su Sheng and opened the box gently. What was inside was the uniform and equipment that he had brought from Talia El Ghul. Su Sheng nodded slightly, and the other party closed the box and placed it at his feet and slowly backed away. Mr. Su Sheng, can I have a few words with you? Bai Si asked with a smile. Okay. Su Sheng smiled brightly and looked at the gunman beside her. But are you sure what you want to talk about will keep me from killing your gunman? Bai Si gave a slight expression and smiled. I think so. I'll talk to her for a few words, will you handle the rest yourself? Su Sheng looked at Frank. Frank nodded in a daze, but he was thinking about Su Sheng's identity. He thought he just had a weird super ability, but now, he can make the triad white porcelain that he feels threatening so polite, who is he? How powerful is the person who can instruct Bai Si to give him something? Not far from the villa, Black Hummer. Two men guarded outside the car, Su Sheng and Bai Si got on the car. Let's talk. Su Sheng smiled lightly. Bai Si speaks Chinese as soon as he speaks, but his tone is a little strange and similar to that of Hong Kong. In addition to delivering things, I have another task, which is to kill you and pay 30 million yuan. Su Sheng nodded noncommittently, if Talia El Ghul didn't take the opportunity to do something, it wouldn't be her. Bai Zi turned around and took out a box and pushed it to Su Sheng to open it, with stacks of dollar bills inside. The money is here, I killed people. I think it should be enough to forgive my subordinates for the behavior just now. Su Sheng looked at the white porcelain with interest. Why did you do this? Because I know who you are and what you have done in Gotham, I don't want to provoke you. I want to get your friendship if I can. Bai Si seriously explained to Su Sheng. No one is a fool. The strength of triads all over the world is not difficult to inquire about the news. Although what Su Sheng did in Gotham was officially blocked, the street gangsters knew about it. Who is Bane? Bai Si knows how strong she is. Even if she is arrogant and not afraid of Bane, she will not provoke a powerful enemy who kills Bane in a flash for the sake of 30 million. And this powerful enemy is still in Starling City, in his own territory. Su Sheng patted the box containing 30 million dollars and suddenly smiled and pushed it over. This is the money you hacked by your own ability and keep it for yourself. I won't ask you the question of whether you are afraid of retaliation. What happened just now is completely wiped out. Don't kill Frank in a short time. Good. Bai Si smiled. If there is a need, the triad is always available to help. Su Sheng smiled and got out of the car and returned to the villa yard. Helena was still lying on the ground. Frank had sat up and simply bandaged the wound and was calling for someone. Seeing Su Sheng coming in, Frank put down the phone to ask about the situation but saw Su Sheng carrying the box in one hand and Helena's hair in the other and walking towards the villa. 
Frank opened his mouth and said nothing in the end. Helena's room, Su Sheng closed the door and let go of Helena, sat down by the bed and opened the box. Two sets of Batman black uniforms of the same material, long trousers, gloves and eye masks, multi-function belts, a retractable and foldable stick, and commonly used rope equipment, etc. Su Sheng carefully checked and confirmed that there was no surveillance equipment on these things, and then got up and walked to the closet to find a bag and put it in casually. My soul is back. Su Sheng chuckled at Helena. You are not dead, the secret has not been exposed, and there are more opportunities to obtain evidence more easily. You should be happy. What's the use, you won't give me a chance to make me successful. Helena raised her head and looked at Su Sheng. You want me to feel that I am getting closer and closer to success, but you are in front of the door of success, a step away. For this step, I dare not die or give up, but I can only endure despair and hope. You are so cruel. I don't mind being cheated, but I don't want anyone to cheat me. I don't want face. As night fell, the villa was brightly lit. The body has already been cleaned up, and Frank's injury has been treated and it is no longer a serious problem. At the moment he was sitting on the sofa, looking at the suitcase on the coffee table with an expressionless face wrapped in bandages. An hour ago he had secretly prepared five million dollars and prohibited the rearranged bodyguards from approaching the villa. At any rate, he is also the leader of a criminal group. Frank naturally does not let people know that his daughter was sleeping upstairs, but he was waiting for the money downstairs, but the environment here is quiet, even if you are outside the villa, you should be able to hear the voices from upstairs, it's just a cover up. The voice gradually stopped, and after a long while, Su Sheng came down from the stairs with a bag after taking a shower. Frank, who had been expressionless, instantly greeted Su Sheng with a smile on his face and enthusiastically greeted Su Sheng. His posture almost asked, is he still satisfied with my daughter? Thank you for saving my life today. This is my little care. Frank pushed the box over and thanked him sincerely. Su Sheng was stunned and asked with a smile. Sure you gave it to me, not me. Definitely. Frank nodded affirmatively. Anything. You deserve to be a gangster. Su Sheng clapped his hands in admiration. When you are so open and bright, I will tell you straight, Helena, I will not take away. I will come when I need it. I am not interested in protecting you every day, and you are not qualified, so it is best to think carefully and trouble me again, understand. It is okay to take advantage of the conditions that I will protect you from death to root out competitors and expand your power, but you have to think carefully about the limited opportunities. Frank originally had this idea, but now Su Sheng said so, how can he still not understand? Naturally, he nodded his head again and again to ensure. He doesn't care who Su Sheng is now, nor does he care about sacrificing his daughter. All he thinks about is which competitor he should start with and which opponent can maximize his own interests. Frank doesn't care, even Su Sheng doesn't care. Anyway, the purpose of helping Frank is only to punish Helena. Once Su Sheng loses interest, everything that Frank uses with him will cease to exist. Sitting in the car arranged by Frank, Su Sheng left with bags and boxes. Hearing the sound of the key opening the door, Felicity, who had just taken a shower, greeted her. As the Emperor's new clothes. I like the look you greeted me a lot, but I still wear some in the future, in case I bring someone back. Su Sheng said teasingly. You'll be back as soon as I finish the bath not to mention who can you bring over. Felicity explained casually, looking at what he was carrying with both hands curiously. What is this? Su Sheng handed it over to the bedroom, and said as he walked. The bag is for Laurel's uniform, and the contents of the box are for you. Give it to me. Felicity opened the box happily to see what Su Sheng gave herself, but as soon as she opened it, she closed it with a scream, like a whirlwind rushing into the bedroom. You, where did you get so much money? Did you do something illegal, dangerous? Don't worry, someone else gave it. Su Sheng smiled. Give it. Who would give you so much money for no reason? This, how much is there? Felicity asked in astonishment. Su Sheng thought for a while. I should be looking for something to do temporarily. This is a reward. I don't have any need for money. You are my girlfriend, so you can spend it boldly. I don't know how much it is. I didn't ask, you can check it yourself. Check it out. Hearing that it was a reward for work, Felicity let go of his curiosity and checked it out, 
5 million, a full 5 million. She hasn't seen so much money yet. Felicity wanted to ask what kind of work was paid 5 million, but after thinking about it, she didn't ask. Who makes his boyfriend not an ordinary person, maybe it is the bonus of some secret mission. Felicity doesn't worship money, but who is unhappy that her boyfriend has given away 5 million directly. Thanks to Su Sheng's good physique, Felicity has unlocked a few more knowledge, otherwise, she must be exposed. I thought Felicity would take time off for shopping the next day, buying bags, clothes, shoes, etc. But when Su Sheng asked, she found out that she had planned everything. Felicity said cheerfully. Let's change to a bigger and better house. Climbing the stairs every day is very tiring and the space is too small. I am optimistic that I can provide you and Laurel with more help in the future. I can buy two by the way. Trolley, keep the rest in case you need it in a hurry. Felicity has planned everything, what else can Su Sheng say? When Felicity went out to work, Su Sheng brought along the uniform prepared for Laurel and planned to go to her new home. As a result, she heard a knock on the door as soon as she was about to go out. Felicity forgot to bring something. Su Sheng opened the door casually, and saw a tall woman wearing a black dress and stockings with a small smile. It's so hard for me to find you. Selena Kyle. Su Sheng looked at Catwoman unexpectedly and suddenly realized why she was here. Su Sheng watched Catwoman's non-smiling expression gradually emerge. Besides wanting to kill him, Talia El Ghul should also want to get back what he took, right? So here comes the question, who can come into contact with oneself and have the ability to steal things, who is the Catwoman in Gotham? What's more, the only contact he didn't have with Catwoman was in the Black Gate prison when she had just crossed over. There was a problem with her current posture of looking for her husband. The white porcelain of the triad is responsible for killing herself, and Catwoman is responsible for stealing things. One light and one dark, two purposes. No matter which goal he achieves, Talia El Ghul can get rid of the predicament of being threatened by himself. Selena Kyle looked at Su Sheng with a weird smile and couldn't help raising her brows, her voice complaining. Don't you ask me to go in and sit down. I stood outside for a long time to prevent your little girlfriend from misunderstanding me. Come in. Su Sheng turned sideways slightly, Selena Kyle came in and looked at the layout of the room. Boom. Hearing the sound of the door closing behind her, she chuckled and turned around. Who would have thought that you who killed Bane would live with an ordinary girl in such a small? Ahem, what are you doing, let go, let me go. Before she finished speaking, she saw Su Sheng suddenly acted he pinched his neck, a sense of suffocation came in an instant, and his body was lightly caught in the air. Selena Kyle's eyes were horrified in grasping Su Sheng's wrists that seemed to be breaking her neck, her feet couldn't help twitching in the air weakly. Let go, let me go. The originally white neck gradually turned red, and she felt that her roar was getting more and more difficult to suck. Is this interesting? What, what? I don't know what you're talking about, let me go, I want to. I can't breathe anymore. Selena Kyle said in pain. Do you think that as long as you are beautiful, boys like it? You think that as long as you are beautiful, you can get forgiveness from the other party for whatever you do. Do you think that you will be forgiven if you are beautiful? Su Sheng asked Selene Nakel has a bad feeling, he wants to kill me, he really wants to kill me. This lunatic, I haven't done anything yet. Selena Kyle raised her leg in a panic and was about to kick her towards Su Sheng, but Su Sheng suddenly dragged her closer so that she couldn't stretch her leg at all. Close at hand, with his eyes facing each other, Su Sheng suddenly smiled. Let me tell you, these are true. What? Selena Kyle was shocked, and then felt like she fell and sat on the ground. Cough cough. Selena Kyle instinctively pressed her neck and gasped, staring sharply at Su Sheng. You are a lunatic, you almost strangled me. Su Sheng spreads his hands. Just kidding. You call this a joke. You almost strangled me. Selena Kyle became even more angry. Su Sheng smiled. You are so embarrassed to steal my things. I made a joke and strangled you. What's wrong? Selena Kyle, who had been so arrogant and angry, couldn't make a sound as if she was pinched again. He actually knew. Looking at the stunned Selena Kyle, Su Sheng took a glass of water and handed it over. You can't make a joke so much. A joke? Who made such a deadly joke? You are just a lunatic. 
The ghost knows when you are joking and when you are not. Selina Kyle cursed wildly in her heart, but she was silent and did not answer Su Sheng. The water glass handed over. This is boring. Su Sheng pours a cup of water directly on Selina Kyle's face. Selina Kyle froze first, and a sense of anger and humiliation rose instantly. You. Yes if I am a joke. Su Sheng asked, narrowing his eyes. Just kidding, playing with your sister's laugh. Selina Kyle finally couldn't help it, and snarled. Su Sheng, you are a lunatic. Now that you know that I am here to steal something, you still let me in, are you kidding? Are you kidding me on purpose? Facing Selina Kyle's angry and distorted face, Su Sheng smiled brightly. Yeah, I just fooled you on purpose. I'm fighting with you. Selina Kyle completely lost her mind, and she was angry and rushed towards Su Sheng. Su Sheng turned around and avoided as expected. Selina Kyle threw herself to the ground and turned around, but she couldn't help but snorted as soon as she got ready. Su Sheng stepped on her chest with one foot and slightly bent over, squinted at her and smiled. Can't make a joke and want to raise the table. You seem to have forgotten an important thing, you can't beat me. Selina Kyle's anger was instantly extinguished. Seeing her calm down, Su Sheng seemed to lose the interest in teasing her. He raised his foot and turned and walked to the sofa to sit down. Let's talk about it, what conditions did she give you? Su Sheng asked lazily and casually. Messy skirt and long wet hair. Selina Kyle, who got up in embarrassment, has lost her previous grace, staring at Su Sheng bitterly for a long time before saying unwillingly. Software that can wash off criminal records. This is something I have always wanted. Su Sheng, you helped me once. Selina Kyle looked at Su Sheng pleadingly. Give me what you photographed, and I owe you a favor. Are you sure there is such a thing? Su Sheng asked. When Selina Kyle heard that there was hope, she hurriedly said, I have heard the news before and have been looking for it. Although I did not find it, this time is different. The Wayne group must have it, so Miranda Tate will come to me for a deal. Help me this time, okay. Chu Chu's pitiful pleading looks like an abandoned kitten, which makes people feel pity. However, Su Sheng was unmoved and shook his head simply. It hasn't played the role I want, so I won't give it to you, but. Selena Kyle, who was initially discouraged, hurriedly raised her head and looked over. Su Sheng gestured to her to come over. Selena Kyle came to Su Sheng hesitantly, and Su Sheng smiled and motioned for her to squat down. As soon as he squatted down, Su Sheng raised his hand and was a skull. Snapped. With a crisp voice, Selina Kyle sat directly on the ground with a sigh, her forehead instantly turned red. What are you doing? Selina Kyle shouted, covering her forehead. Are you stupid? If she really has this software, I can just ask for it, and return the handle to it. Su Sheng cursed angrily. Selina Kyle was stunned, yes, I didn't really help Miranda Tate, I just need to get the software. In this case, Selina Kell instantly stared at Su Sheng expectantly. Do something for me, and when it becomes me, I will help you wash off the record. Su Sheng said. You say. Follow me to meet someone first. Su Sheng got up and went out carrying the bag, Selina Kyle hurriedly followed. Along the way, the attention came again and again, after all, it is rare for such a beautiful and tall woman to walk on the street in such embarrassment. In order to clean up, Selina Kyle endured. After walking for about half an hour, Su Sheng took her to an apartment building, and went upstairs and knocked on the door of a certain room. Bang bang bang. The door opened soon after the knock fell. Laurel looked at the strange woman next to Su Sheng unexpectedly, tall and beautiful but a little embarrassed. She is. Laurel asked Su Sheng. Selina Kyle, your new teacher. Su Sheng said casually after coming in. New teacher. Laurel and Selina Kyle both looked at Su Sheng in surprise, and saw Su Sheng walk to the sofa and sat down casually and put the bag down. This is the uniform and common equipment I got for you. During this time, you will continue to learn to practice fighting ability with Selina Kyle. Selina Kyle, give you what you want whenever you teach her. How far is the teacher calculated? Selina Kyle frowned and asked. At least I can play with you, and be able to go out and perform tasks alone. Selina Kyle stopped talking, but Laurel couldn't help asking. What about you? You, don't you teach me anymore? Do you have Stockholm Syndrome? Su Sheng glanced at Laurel and got up. 
I recently encountered something interesting, and I will come back when you start. Come on, you two. Su Sheng walked from the middle of Laurel and Selena Kyle to the door. When passing by, he slapped both hands on the buttocks and then opened the door and left. Laurel and Selena Kyle looked at each other, and the atmosphere of embarrassment filled. Don't look at Selena Kyle being pitifully bullied without the strength to fight back in front of Su Sheng, but her ability to teach Laurel is enough, Su Sheng just took advantage of this time to train Helena. Frank played roar with the family's bodyguard, so Su Sheng went upstairs to Helena's room without any interrogation or obstruction in the past. One night passed, Helena seemed to figure it out. Talking and laughing at him as if nothing happened yesterday, Su Sheng is also happy to see it, if Helena is desperate and numb, it will be boring. Su Sheng asked her to take a look at the evidence she had collected before. Although there were a lot of them, they did not play a decisive role. Not to mention that Frank had a certain influence in Starling City. Even without these alone, he would not be able to judge him for a few years. As long as my father takes you to fight against competitors, I will have the opportunity to collect direct evidence, but he will not take me to the scene easily. Helena said and looked at Su Sheng, Su Sheng smiled lightly. I will not help you collect evidence, I will only create opportunities for you. That's enough, Helena said confidently. Just let him make them think that I'm not Frank Bettinelli's daughter but your woman, and no one cares if I show up with you. So, do you have any tricks you want to try? Helena's personality is extreme, with a typical self-harm and self-destructive consciousness. In order to achieve her goal, she can sacrifice everything, including herself. It is no wonder that she will become cruel and cruel, even if she doesn't care, how can she care about others? This character brings many surprises to Su Sheng. In the next few days, in the bedroom and the living room, Helena changed his patterns every day to make him interested and even drove everyone out of the villa to let Su Sheng drag racing on the lawn of the courtyard. When Su Sheng went to see some houses in Felicity's photo, Helena would also accompany him there. He drove the driver and bodyguards out of the car on the side of the road and stayed beside them, waiting for them to finish the shock and continue driving. Su Sheng feels that he has to drink some nutrition express to make up, otherwise his girlfriend Felicity should be dissatisfied. I have to say that Helena's ridiculous act of sacrificing her face has a very good effect. In just a few days, Frank's impression of Helena has changed from the file-size sister to Su Sheng's girlfriend. She definitely said that she was actually the girlfriend. Everyone knows it well. Although Frank never showed up, he knew all kinds of news clearly, and some of the group's men were quite dissatisfied. After all, it's about face. If people in other gangs know that their elder's daughter is like this, are they embarrassed to go out? The boss who sacrificed his daughter, would they still dare to follow? Frank decided to talk to Su Sheng. Driving home, Frank went into the villa and asked the bodyguard. Is Helena at home? Upstairs, that, that person is also there, just went up. You go out first. Frank frowned and waved his bodyguard away, hesitation for a moment but didn't go up. Upstairs in the room, Helena waited for a while before seeing her father go upstairs and couldn't help but said with a sneer. It seems that the time is almost right. He came back but didn't go upstairs. It should be because he was planning to ask you for help. Then go down and take a look. Wait, I change my clothes. Helena stopped Su Sheng and walked to the closet. It didn't take long to see her standing in front of Su Sheng wearing high heels, suspenders, and black tights. How about it? Good. And this. Helena turned around and took out a leather neck ring and put it on. The neck ring was buckled with a long rope chain. Helena handed it to Su Sheng's hand. Playing so hard. Su Sheng dumbly tugged on the rope, she really went out without a bit of shame. Helena pointed to the ornament on the neck ring. This was specially customized by me before. I originally planned to put it on the dog he often carried to collect evidence through audio and video recordings, but I didn't expect an accidental death some time ago. Now I wear it to collect evidence and I will not provoke me. People suspect that they can slap him in the face again, and I am looking forward to them seeing you leading me onto the stage. I started to admire you a little. Su Sheng really didn't expect to have such a function. She deserves to be a huntress in the future. Means, skinny, and patience. Helena can do everything to kill her prey. 
This kind of behavior Da Meng's unconcerned attitude may not be able to escape her hunting by a few prey. Su Sheng appreciates Helena's attitude, because he is also the kind of person who has no worries. Da da da. Footsteps came from the stairs, Frank turned his head and saw Su Sheng led Helena down the stairs, but, he was not holding a hand, but a rope. When Frank saw his daughter's dress being pulled down by Su Sheng, his first reaction was not anger, but luck. Fortunately he drove everyone out just now. Your daughter is really great. Su Sheng came to Frank and praised very seriously. Frank smiled awkwardly at Su Sheng, but he was very annoyed at Helena. Where did you go against my temper? It's useless to be so obedient to him. Have you thought about it? Su Sheng asked pointedly. Frank said instantly. Antony Benza, the leader of the drug dealer group who fought the three-round chamber to eat the Starling drug market together, I want to talk to him about cooperation in the evening. Not at night, now. Su Sheng said casually. Now. But I haven't arranged it yet. Frank said in surprise. Then make arrangements, I don't want to waste time. Su Sheng said casually, leading Helena out of the villa before Frank hadn't reacted. In the afternoon sun and breeze, the bodyguard outside the villa looked dumbfoundedly at Su Sheng and took Helena across the lawn to the garage as if walking with a dog. OMG. This this. What are you doing in a daze, tell the staff to go to Antony Benz's site. Frank's roar came from the villa, and the bodyguards scattered around him, ready to go, seeing his face pale. In front of a factory in the east port of Starling. The two parties confronted each other with guns. Frank and Antonin Benza had an unpleasant discussion about the issue of cooperation, and the little brother behind him was playing what you're worried about and watching you. How long has it been? In a business car behind Frank, Su Sheng asked Helena a little impatiently. Helena thought for a while. 20 minutes, right. I haven't started fighting in 20 minutes, are the gangsters so civilized and polite? Su Sheng couldn't help but complain. Helena sneered disdainfully and said, he can't refuse you to take me with me and don't want people to see him, so he wanted to use your plan to solve Antoine Benza and had to change it. If you don't go down, he is not sure to solve Antoine Benza. It's just been deadlocked for so long. I'm not interested in waiting too long. Su Sheng opened the car door and led Helena out of the car and walked over. The crowd gradually separated, and Frank had a bad feeling when he heard the voice behind him. Is that your daughter? Ha 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 ha. Frank, this is the reason why you dare to trouble me suddenly. In order to find a helper, you gave him your own daughter as a dog. What a pity that he can do it alone. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. Although this the way he played was a little shocked, but Antoine Vinci still recognized Helena at a glance, and he also guessed why Frank dared to make trouble suddenly. After the astonishment, there was an arrogant sneer, not only Anthony Venza, but also the little brother behind him. Frank raised his gun and wanted to kill Antoine Wensa directly, but suddenly he heard a low groan. Noisy. Su Sheng lightly frowned and loosened the rope holding Helena, and the whole body suddenly lit up. The dazzling electric current crackled. Unlimited stacking, a hundred times. Ten million volts. In an instant, there seemed to be only a kind of azure light left between the sky and the earth, Su Sheng pointed to the sky, and the electric current turned into thunder. Roar roared and penetrated into the sky. Quiet. Deathly silence. The person who just laughed at the moment at the moment looked at Su Sheng, who was full of electric lights, as if he had been pressed the pause button. Tick, the tick of raindrops gradually dripped from the top of their heads, and the shocked people looked at Su Sheng in horror like a first awakening from a dream. Fall. Su Sheng raised his finger to the factory behind Antoine Wensa and others. Boom. There was a loud noise in the sky, and the thunder fell from the sky and hit the factory in an instant. The roof was pierced directly, and explosions followed after a few seconds. The flames skyrocketed. The impact of the explosion accompanied the thunder's electric current to form a powerful shockwave that instantly agitated. For a long time, the big raindrops gradually stopped, the dazzling thunder disappeared, and the entire factory turned into nothingness, only a little residue still burning. Looking around, everyone from Antoine Vinca and Frank was lying on the ground, and the lucky ones twitched slightly and foamed at the mouth, and the ones with bad luck were directly electrocuted by the impact of the diffused electric current. Only Su Sheng stands like pines and cypresses. The movement seems to be too big. 
Su Sheng muttered to Frank who was lying on the ground, Did you die? Didn't you die? Get up to business. Frank panicked and shook his head subconsciously, only to react after a long while. Su Sheng was on his side. Thinking of this, he struggled to stand up and walk towards Antoninus slowly. Antoine Wensa struggled in horror, but his body didn't listen at all. Frank raised a gun at him, swept away the anger that had been ridiculed before, and said vigorously. It's not a shame to sell dignity, it's a shame to fail to sell a good price. This is what one person can do. Boom. Anthony Vinsa fell to the ground at the sound of gunfire. The proud Frank didn't spit out and wanted to say something, but when he saw the almost raised factory, his face became stiff and he couldn't say anything. Su Sheng was not interested in listening to Frank's afterthoughts, and pulled Helena away in a muffled moan. Get in the car. Su Sheng started the car and left. In the car, Helena looked at Su Sheng and asked quietly. Is this your strongest strength? The strongest power? No, I'm afraid that will ruin the earth. Su Sheng shook his head and chuckled. In theory, there is no upper limit to his power, as long as the power is infinitely superimposed, even a single punch can blow the earth. Not long after Su Sheng and Helena left, the East Port was in chaos. The police car and the fire truck arrived quickly, and Frank had to face the police's questioning just after disposing of Antoine Wentz's body. He said the matter as it was, but only concealed the fact that Su Sheng summoned thunder and shot Antoine Venza himself. As for the police, believe it or not. Ha ha. Anyway, there is no evidence, let alone summoning the incredible thing of thunder, who would believe it unless he saw it with his own eyes. The police did not believe it, but there was no evidence to explain the appearance of the thunder and Antony Venza was not found. The most important thing was that Antony Venza's younger brother also insisted on Frank's statement, so in the end this matter was judged to be a natural event. It's definitely not that no one guessed that this thunder was related to Su Sheng, such as the Tianyan meeting that stopped fighting. After the last incident, Tianyan will temporarily stop contacting Su Sheng. Perhaps because of Laurel's relationship, they think this is a better way to observe Su Sheng. After all, except for the unpleasantness at first, Su Sheng treats Laurel. It's really good. The uniform that Laurel is now wearing comes from Wayne Enterprise, and there is a sonic equipment that has not been used from the Center City's cutting-edge laboratory. Although the methods are not glorious, they are all prepared by Su Sheng for Laurel. First, I asked Catwoman, a famous jewel thief from Gotham, to teach Laurel to fight ability, not to mention that the eyes of the sky would not believe that Laurel is not important to Su Sheng, even Laurel's mother Dinah Lance didn't believe it. Therefore, Tianyan, who had already given up armed conflict, will strengthen this strategy after learning of the Thunder Incident in the East Port. The Thunder Incident affected more than Tianyanwe. Helena took the shot of Frank shooting Antoine Vinza, but it was not enough. She needed more evidence, so she not only kept the current, personal design, or even more involved, sometimes Su Sheng couldn't tell the truth from the fake. But the effect was obvious. When Frank asked him for help again, no one cared about Helena's existence, let alone that she would collect evidence. Frank would send a sum of money every time he helped, so Su Sheng simply bought a villa for Felicity. After all, it's my girlfriend, not to mention that it's more secretive, and it's more convenient to team up with Black Canary in the future. What a superhero without even an activity base. After moving, all kinds of equipment were quietly installed in the basement, and a small command base appeared. In the room of the master bedroom. Felicity, who had finished the battle, wiped the battle marks on his face and asked Su Sheng, who had already been lying down. The equipment at the base has been debugged, when do you plan to introduce me to Laurel officially? At night, I'll bring her here in a while. Su Sheng said. Felicity nodded and asked curiously, lying in his arms. By the way, what did you ask me to delete just now? Something that will make someone desperate. Su Sheng said with a smile. With his cooperation and help, Helena has collected enough evidence to allow Frank to stay in prison for a lifetime, and the hope of success is growing. Then, Su Sheng just asked Felicity to delete these evidences. Do you think I don't know the reason you figured it out is to use me to collect evidence and at the same time please me, let me forgive you, not stop you. Experience despair in hope. 
Su Sheng is looking forward to Helena knowing that the evidence she has tried so hard to collect will be destroyed once, is it desperate and numb, and there will be no huntress in the future? Or is it the courage to face reality and continue to struggle to create the birth of the huntress? With a detached mentality, let your desperate strength influence a person's choice and change her destiny, no matter what the final result is, interesting or boring, at least this process is very satisfied and enjoyable. As for what other people think and don't understand, Su Sheng doesn't care. As a traverser who understands the world, has a transcendent mentality and absolute strength, he doesn't confess to himself but cares so much about other people's perspectives and opinions. What's the point of traversing? Rest for a while. Su Sheng hugged Felicity and took a shower together, then got dressed and drove to pick up Laurel. Watching the car slowly drive out of the villa, a woman appeared in the nearby woods. Dark leather uniform, wearing eagle-like armor. The goal is to leave the villa, you can do it. Received, come here to meet up. When the voice fell, she saw her shaking her shoulders, and a pair of huge amounts of wings stretched out from her back and flew into the air to chase Su Sheng's car. A tire burst suddenly sounded on the quiet road, Su Sheng frowned slightly when he saw a few people suddenly rushing out of the side. Captain Cold Leonard Steiner, Heatwave Microly, Adam Ray Palmer, White Canary Sarah Rance, Firestorm Jefferson Jackson and Martin Stein, Eagle Mail Carter Hall, Original Time Lord Liffin Special. Isn't this the legendary team? Still the first legendary team. Malcolm Merlin hasn't died yet, Laurel hasn't become Black Canary yet. Why did they come? Su Sheng blinked unexpectedly and got out of the car, and then saw a figure flying in the sky, hot girl Kendra Sanders falling from the sky and standing with them. Tomorrow's legendary team's initial camp, all members are here. Watching the legendary squad staring at him vigilantly and cautiously one by one, Su Sheng, who got out of the car, looked at the blown tires before opening his mouth with a smile. Pay it. Pay. What to lose? Tires. The team members who thought they could do it at any time were stunned. Even if you weren't surprised by our existence, you couldn't calmly demand compensation from us, right? What's more, is this the point? Is he really the one we're looking for? Captain Cold asked suspiciously. It seems that we did break his tires, so, do you have to pay? Adam Mengmung asked in a low voice. The captain of the legendary squad, the captain of the bow, the former master of time, Lip Hunter frowned and spoke to Su Sheng. We will compensate for the loss of the car later, but now we need to talk about time safety issues immediately. Su Sheng looked at them one by one, smiling brightly. Okay, I also want to know why you are here now. Why are you here now? You know us, and you know we will come. Sarah Lance asked with a frown. Her blonde hair was dazzling in the sun, and the tight-fitting uniform of the white waistcoat made the airport look very spectacular. She held the silver short sticks in her hands and splayed it out slightly, as if she didn't agree with her. The top assassin of the Assassin League, the White Canary, the boyfriend who hooks up with my sister, the fool who eats all men and women, am I right? Su Sheng smiled. Sarah Lance smiled suddenly. To each other. Su Sheng disapprovingly jumped over her and started to spit out one by one. Ray Palmer, he can obviously become Adam when he is a Superman, and he forced the grid to plummet. Jefferson Jackson, one of the firestorms, the success of the junior third class makes people forget the model of the original match. Martin Stein, if you come to take risks with young people as a scientist, you will die. Captain Cold Leonard Steiner, because your father abused you and your sister since he was a child, he later became a criminal. Your sister is very beautiful. I don't mind to comfort him after you die. It should be faster than Martin. Stein died early. By the way, in a certain world, you are gay. As for your heatwave, Microly, although he is an arsonist, he is one of the most successful in whitewashing. Remember to write me when you write novels in the future. Hawkman Carter Hall. Hot girl Kendra Sanders, I only have one word for the two of you, waste. You are left in the end. Su Sheng looked at Lip Hunt, who was ugly and shocked. I actually admire you the most. It was obviously to save the family but shamelessly called this group of rubbish under the banner of saving time and saving the world, and it succeeded. Every time a sentence is said, a person's face becomes ugly, anger at being ridiculed, and shock at the content. Have you seen us in the future? Lip Hunt asked with a frown. 
I thought the mission this time was just to prevent Su Sheng from picking up Laurel to avoid the formation of the Birds of Prey and change the fate of Sarah Lance. But now Su Sheng knows them so well or even knows the future that they don't know. The only explanation is that the legendary team that Su Sheng has seen the future knows their future destiny, which is a bit tricky. It seems we have a lot to talk about. Lip Hunter said solemnly. Su Sheng smiled back. Then go and talk slowly on board the wave. Chengbo is a large expeditionary ship that uses ion propulsion as the main propulsion power. It has time travel, stealth, autopilot, self-diagnosis functions, equipped with medical rooms, escape ships, and artificial intelligence Gideon. It is a legendary team crossing. Time is the only vehicle for correcting time deviation. Su Sheng followed the emotionally complex legendary team on board the Waverider and first attacked the artificial intelligence roar. Hello, Gideon. Hello, Mr. Su Sheng. The female voice of the electronic synthesis sounded. Su Sheng smiled and leaned against the console and said to Lip Hunt and others. Let's talk about the time deviation you know first. Rip Hunt looked at Sarah Rance. Sarah Lance said. Because you made my sister the Black Canary in advance and also formed the Raptor Squad with Felicity and Catwoman, which resulted in a series of deviations. I was not killed by Thea Quinn, was not resurrected, and my sister was not caught. Killed by me and Dick. Two kinds of memories appear in my mind at the same time. I can feel that the original memory is disappearing. This shows that time is slowly strengthening your changed reality. For us, you are changing history. So we must stop you from doing this. Time is linear. Although reality has not happened yet, it continues to develop. Time slowly solidifies and changes the reality, and the past history will be replaced by new history. Before the time deviation is detected and the history has not completely changed, it crosses to the time deviation point to stop and protect the original history. This is the reason why the legendary team came to Su Sheng. Su Sheng is the time deviation that caused history to change. Done. After listening to Sarah Lance quietly, Su Sheng leaned on the console and smiled and raised his finger. I have two questions. You said. Sarah Lance said. The first question, why didn't you go to the point in time when I kidnapped Laurel? Since the time deviation can be inferred, wouldn't it be better to solve it from the source? If the legendary team came to Su Sheng at that time, he really might not if Laurel will be trained to become Black Canary in advance, there will be no follow-ups. It's too late. Lip Hunt shook his head. When we noticed something was wrong, that period of history had already been fixed. Okay, second question. You, why do you stop me? Su Sheng asked with a smile. His question made the legendary team nervous in an instant. According to the few experiences, every mission will not go so smoothly, and this time I am afraid it will be the same. Sarah Lance squeezed the club. Captain Cold and Heatwave also raised the cryogen and flamethrower, and Heatwave pointed at Su Sheng and said grimly. Only I can burn you to ashes. Su Sheng looked at the Heatwave and said seriously. Trust me, you can't do it. Then try. Heat wave followed. Seeing that a conflict was about to occur, Lip Hunt hurriedly stopped the heat wave and said to Su Sheng. I don't think it is a wise choice to get my ex-girlfriends together. You only need to not introduce them to solve this problem. 1. Only Felicity is my ex-girlfriend, and we haven't broken up yet. 2. Why don't I ask about force? Su Sheng raised two fingers and looked at Lip Hunt. In order to save your family, you formed a legendary team to deal with the immortal tyrant Vandal Savage. Although you were shamelessly involved in saving the world, don't you travel through time and change history. It's just you to correct the time deviation. Personal behavior, what position do you have to stop me? Rip Hunt was silent, and the others who had originally wanted to refute were also silent. But we are saving the world. Adam explained in a low voice without confidence. But obviously this explanation was ignored by everyone. I admit that we have no position to demand you, but we must do this. If you don't stop you, Sarah Lance will not only remember that there will be problems, she will also disappear from our team, so. Lip Hunt suddenly shouted. Gideon, immediately jump at random points in time. Okay, Captain Hunter. Gideon's voice sounded, and the next moment the wave rider suddenly lifted off and accelerated. The strong wind roar screamed, and the propeller glowed blue. With a swish, the wave rider disappeared. 
The violent vibration made everyone who fell instantly turn their backs on their backs, and the pressure caused by the time jump made people dizzy and tinnitus, as if the heart was about to jump out, it was very uncomfortable. I don't know how long it took, as if a few hours and only a few minutes, the shaking finally slowly stopped, and the waverider landed. Enter invisible mode and report time and place. Rip Hunter, who had not had time to get up from the ground, hurriedly gave instructions to Gideon. It has entered invisible mode, in 1917, in the waters near Paradise Island. Everyone groaned and got up one after another in pain. Martin Stein found his glasses again and asked subconsciously. In 1917, the year before the end of the First World War. Where is Paradise Island? I hate to travel through time. Relang cursed uncomfortably with the nausea of vomiting. It's better to let me burn him to death. Lip Hunter straightened the collar of the trench coat and explained. Paradise Island is an island isolated from the world, where only Amazonians live. And, only women. It sounds like a very suitable place for him to stay. Sarah Lance was teasing but staring at Su Sheng lying on the ground to prevent him from getting up. Rip Hunter's original intention was to temporarily take Su Sheng away and find a place to settle. As long as he did not pick up the Laurel Raptor team, he would not know each other and would not affect Sarah Lance, and wait for the time deviation to be corrected. Just delete his memory and send it back, but Paradise Island. He hesitation said. It's not friendly to outsiders, especially men. There will be danger. If he is careful not to be found out by the Amazons on the island, there should be no problem, as long as the time deviation is corrected, we will come and pick him up. Lip Hunter thought for a while and said. Captain Cold asked. Leaving him here won't cause any more time deviations, will it? Probably not, Amazonians are not that easy to mess with. Lip Hunt shook his head. Sarah Lance walked to Su Sheng's side and squatted down, watching him silently for a long while and said. Although it hasn't happened to you yet, Laurel loves you very much in my memory. You got tired of playing but dumped her. So I hope you can die on Paradise Island, but, you let her live after all. Even if it's just a time lag when I get down, find a place to hide and we will pick you up. It sounds like something I would do, so. I'm still green with Oliver Quinn. Su Shang grinned lightly. Her first man is you. Sarah Lance snarled angrily. Why do you think I would be with Oliver? I just want to beat her, in the matter of going to bed. Paradise Island, legend has it that was created by Olympus the king of god Zeus. The surrounding area of the island is protected by a magical force field, making it impossible for many high-tech equipment to detect the location of the island. Seeing from a distance, there is nothing but an endless ocean. Once it gets closer, it will produce a dim fog that makes people lose their direction. Ordinary people don't dare to go deep. The small expeditionary escape ship of the Maribo passed through the dim fog and the scenery changed abruptly. The dim fog disappeared and replaced by a clear blue sky, layers of white clouds underneath the water is clear and translucent, and a majestic and beautiful island is in front of you. The high cliffs, the green natural ecological environment, and there is a complex of buildings on the island from a distance. This is Paradise Island, it's so beautiful. Sarah Lance landed on the shore in a small expeditionary escape ship. The hatch opened and Sarah Lance and Su Sheng walked down. Stepping on the golden sand, Su Sheng smiled with satisfaction. I start to like this place. Are you sure you want to stay here? I know in my memory that you are very skilled but Amazons are not ordinary, so don't trouble me or trouble yourself. Find a place to hide and I will come back to pick you up soon. Sarah Lance started from G. Dean learned about the situation on Paradise Island, so he reminded Su Shang very seriously. She didn't think Su Shang could do anything else here, on the contrary, she was more worried about his safety. Here. But Paradise Island. Seeing Sarah Lance's serious warning, Su Shang shrugged disapprovingly. Don't blame me for not reminding you, don't regret it. Sarah Lance chuckled and turned away. Watching the small expedition escape ship take off and leave, Su Sheng turned and looked at Paradise Island and smiled. He has always felt that the name Paradise Island is very appropriate. For Amazons, it is isolated from the world like a paradise. For men, is it not a paradise if there are only women on the whole island? Should I shout like some S2 characters, Paradise Island, I'm here. Su Sheng thought about it seriously and finally gave up because he saw the Amazonian. 
Several Amazons with helmets, leather armors, bows and arrows in their hands appeared on the cliffs tens of meters high. These people have handsome looks, heroic appearances, and they are very upright. They don't seem to have the slightest fat on their bodies, and they are full of power. Whoosh whoosh. Several Amazons suddenly jumped off the cliff. People were in midair, shooting bows and arrows, and their bows and arrows were accurately and powerfully nailed to the cliffs to make them fall to the ground with a rope. After landing, he opened his bow again and aimed at Su Sheng and leaned forward vigilantly. The whole process took less than 10 seconds, smooth and smooth. The sharp arrow seemed to be able to shoot a few holes in him at any time, but Su Sheng did not panic, a pair of black eyes looked at them with interest. Hi, hello. Su Sheng greeted Roar with a bright smile. But the Amazonian stared at him fiercely and did not respond. Su Sheng curled his lips, really rude. Da da da, da da da. The sound of horse hooves came from a distance, and the horses stopped in a blink of an eye. Queen, how do you deal with this intruder? The Amazon asked the woman who was clearly different from the others on the white horse. This woman has long golden hair, a forehead that symbolizes rights and status, and she wears a leather armor with exposed shoulders, and a long sticky wool waistcoat on the outside. The sturdy thighs of the riding horse were exposed, and he was wearing a pair of dark gold boots over the knees. Amazon Queen of Paradise Island, the mother of Wonder Woman Diana. Hippolyte. He is the only one. Hippolyte asked. Only found him. Take it back and ask for clarity. After Hippolyte finished speaking, he planned to turn his horse's head and go back. At the same time, someone walked towards Su Sheng and prepared to escort him away. Can I ride your horse? Su Sheng asked a question that made everyone angry. Riding the queen's horse. You, an intruder, dare to make such a condition. Hippolyte turned his head and frowned and stared at Su Sheng. Intruder, are you provoking me? Su Sheng said with a friendly smile. I just want to try the feeling of riding a horse. You know it is not so easy to ride a horse outside, so, your horse is the best looking here. Although I am not a prince nor a Tang monk, I still want to ride a white horse. Grab him. This kind of Kai Guguo's provocation made Hippolyte very angry, but in order to find out whether he had any accomplices, he could not be killed for the time being. With an order, the Amazons rushed over coldly and arrogantly. Legendary team, I reminded you not to regret it. Seeing the Amazons rushing over, Su Sheng mumbled and squatted down as if he was about to surrender. Is this scared? The originally angry Amazons couldn't help but sneered. Just now they thought they had the courage to provoke the queen, but he didn't expect to be a coward. Unlimited stacking, 20 times. Su Sheng raised his fist and slammed to the ground. Boom. The beach was sunken in an instant, and the huge amounts of power shocked and immediately knocked the nearby Amazonians to the ground. The horse roared and the people riding on the horse such as Hippolyte were shaken off the horse and fell to the ground in an instant. Su Sheng slowly got up and retracted his fists, and sighed softly as he looked at the discolored faces of the Amazons. Why, I just want to ride your horse, not you. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.